the following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Two years ago, Bobby Ross's Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets were 3-8 and eight and seemed a long way from a possible national championship. This season, led by sophomore quarterback Sean Jones, Georgia Tech was unbeaten heading into its November matchup with then number one Virginia. With the defense making the big plays in the second half, the Yellow Jackets ended Virginia's national title hopes for the last second victory. And with that win, Georgia Tech began its ascension in the polls and dreams of a national championship of its own. In their way today stands the Nebraska Cornhuskers with a bone-crushing defense and that always potent running game. Today, Georgia Tech attempts to turn their dreams of number one into reality as they take on Nebraska in the 45th annual Florida Citrus Bowl. Jones, I'm Brent Musburger. So nice to have you with us. We have got the simplest of storylines here today for you. If Georgia Tech wins, there are a whole lot of folks, including a couple of this booth, who think they deserve to be number one because they would be the only unbeaten team in the nation. But here they are ranked number two, and they're not even favored. Nebraska, ranked 19th, is favored by two points. Folks, you figure it out. <laughs> Dick Vermeil, what about this Georgia Tech team? A lot of folks are not familiar with their personnel. Well, offensively, they're led by Sean Jones and a set of school total offense record this year, both running and passing. Very gifted guy. In fact, the coaches are already saying he's a Heisman Trophy candidate next year. Defensively, Ken Swelling, a great big 235 pounds free safety can cover and knock your helmet off, sets the tempo for the defense. Now on the other side of the ball, Nebraska comes in with a new quarterback for this ball game. Well, he's new. Michael Grant is new. He was the starter first game of the season. He got hurt. Mickey Joseph took over. He got hurt. Michael Grant is back today. Watched him on practice field Saturday, and he looked like he was ready to play very well. All right, Mickey Joseph making news of a different sort here, as he is one of four players suspended by Nebraska coach Tom Osborne. Joseph wouldn't have played anyway. Lance Lewis, though, would have been the starting fullback. Two defensive backs also out for violating rules earlier in the week. We're coming back with Nebraska and Georgia Tech in just a moment. The Florida Citrus Bowl. Brought to you by Intensive Treatment from Head and Shoulders. Tough on persistent dandruff without medicated hair. By Mercury. Nothing moves you like a Mercury. By Ultra Slim Fast a delicious, healthy way to lose weight fast. And by UPS, now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. Seventy thousand on hand, and before we start, let's check in with our Mark Jones. Mark, Happy New Year. Thanks a lot, guys. You know, this week it was great. We had a chance to meet an athlete that really fine-tuned our focus on life in general. Kenny Walker of Nebraska has been deaf since the age of two. So instead of hearing the roar of the 70,000-plus on hand today, Walker's world will sound like this. What I just said... ...to all of us. You, especially when you consider the fact that Walker was the first death player to be named an All-American. It really is amazing. And you know, in their last home game of the season, the fans showed their appreciation. And the important thing was they can appreciation Kenny's way. 
So an example of how that young man views the world. One of the more remarkable stories in college athletics, Kenny Walker. And we will show you how he reads the signals and the changes down at the line. You'll meet his interpreter here this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Cornhuskers will kick it off. Byron Bennett will kick it. And the unbeaten Yellow Jackets will handle it for the first time. Kevin Tisdell standing back on the Tech two-yard line. Sean Jones, who will quarterback the Yellow Jackets. He's out of Thomasville, Georgia, and he has done a fabulous job leading this offense. Stephen Scotton is his fullback. William Bell is tailback. Merchant and Rodriguez are just two of his wide receivers. Bobby Ross will shuttle in plays. The offensive line, Joe Sifri, the veteran guard, number 62, leads that contingent. So here is the first play, and immediately Bobby Ross moves his tight end from one side to the other, trying to camouflage formations, showing Nebraska something they don't often see. Then on first down, he pumps one into the ground. Defensively for Nebraska. The side of the ball where the Cornhuskers always excel. Pat Engelbert, the man in the middle, and the linebackers. And what a group this is. Mike Kroll, number 88. Remember the name and number. He'll be a star someday in the NFL. Reggie Cooper broke the tackling record for Nebraska secondary players. So now it is second and ten after the incompletion. Jones bringing Bell around the left side. And he broke a tackle before he was brought down by Kroll, number 88. In on the first stop and just short of a first down. Georgia Tech getting right into their game plan. Ralph Friedgen, the offensive coordinator for Georgia Tech, said we're very concerned about Nebraska's overall speed. We're going to use counteraction, play action pass, misdirection as much as we can. Also vary the snap count, maybe draw them offside and then slow them down. But you'll also see them changing the strength of the formation, as you've already seen in the first couple of snaps. That's Georgia Tech's offensive approach. Pat Tyrants is being helped off as he's under his own power. He was shaken up on that play. He received attention on the field from the training staff at Nebraska, so he will have to miss at least a down. He is one of their stalwart linebackers. Third and short, the power eye. Bell battles toward first down territory before Joe Sims can bring him down for the Cornhuskers. You notice in that third and short situation, Georgia Tech remained in a spread formation, choosing not to constrict their formation offensively and constrict the strength of that defense. They spread them out and went inside anyway. First down. Tom Quinn leads a Big Ten crew of officials in this year's Citrus Bowl. They have signaled first down. So it was the strong second down run that got the job done for Georgia Tech in that sequence after they threw an incompletion on first down. On first down, again, Jones, who has the ability to break out, and he does just that. Scrambling free at the 40, 35, 30, inside the 15-yard line. defensive coordinator said if they move the ball at all we're going to come after him with some pressure bringing the outside linebackers you see him coming both sides he shakes it no in the grass rule in the ncaa games here he is making a nice run you can see he can both run and throw the football that's why he broke the school record total offense john jones five yard gain inside the 15 yard line the toss the to bell Running to the boundary side and gaining perhaps a yard, Reggie Cooper was among the white jerseys of Nebraska, bringing him down on that side. So an ad-lib by Sean Jones, 
shocks the Huskers here. Well, he has been so efficient. There's Charlie McBride figuring it out right now. Inside the 20-yard line, that red zone, they have a specific game plan, and they'll be going to it right now. You can see. Nine yards for the first down. Jones again rolling to the right. Bobbled out of bounds and incomplete. Bruce Pickens, number 38, doing the job defensively for this Nebraska secondary against Jerry Gilchrist. They use a play-action fake inside to try to slow down the defense from getting outside. See, throws the linebackers momentarily. He's out there. He's going to throw the out pattern to the left-hand corner of your screen. He comes back nicely for it, but Pickens comes back as well. Good defense all the way. Bobby Rodriguez, number three, a wide receiver, coming out to Sean Jones' right. He brought the play in off the sideline. Now Covington, the tight end, will move up to the left, and they throw three wide receivers at this defensive unit. And Jones running the quarterback kicker across the five-yard line. This could give the Rambling Wreck another first down. It's very close. You know, I'm surprised that caught Nebraska by surprise because in the two game tapes that I looked at, they like the quarterback draw down in this area because you're going to get good pressure by the defensive lineman. More often than not, your secondary is all going to be tied up man-to-man, -man and you can break up in there cleanly. An official's timeout. They will measure. Referee Tom Quinn out of Chicago will bring the chains out from that far side. Have to get down and take a closer look, and they got it. <laughs> he had to get down on a knee to get how close it was. I think when he made the decision, the big 320-pound offensive tackle looked over his shoulder and said he didn't want to argue with him. <laughs> Taking a look again at that quarterback draw. Here's how they got down. Oh, Jones the breaking scramble. free. Here's that scramble play coming back with it. You can see he has that good quickness of a running back. Now, first and goal from inside the five. And beautifully defended by Nebraska that time. Stephen Scotton carrying the ball, and Reggie Cooper, number 17, made the first hit. Georgia Tech has shown a tendency to use a lot of motion down there to change the strength of their formation. The one thing that they normally do, though, is they run toward the motion. So right now, I think they're going to have to set a motion one way and come the other way to slow down that Tech, I mean, the Nebraska defense. Bell and Scott are behind Jones. It has been Jones' running ability that has set up this scoring opportunity. Scott and for the touchdown. Georgia Tech strikes first. It's a real good block, Jay Martin, number 80. Good tackle right there, but he doesn't give up. Stephen Scotton, academic All-American as well. Scotton broke free of that tackle by Bruce Pickens at the goal line. And Scott Sisson, who has been number one hero for the Ramblin' Wreck, makes it a 7-0 score. And in a game of this magnitude, it is hard to overrate the importance of scoring first. <laughs> it's this kind of day which convinces a whole lot of northerners to move on down here to central florida at orlando it is beautiful scott and capped off that drive and the key play of course was sean jones 46 yard run alan waters to kick it off for the ramblin wreck nebraska was the number one team in the nation returning kickoffs this year this is Derek brown the talented freshman he makes his way out to the 25 yard line 
This is the touchdown, Dick, that made it 7-0. Taking one more look. Simple fullback off tackle play. You'll see man in motion, Eric Martin, coming in. He's going to block the point. See, he gets the block right there. F lead back, Bell comes around, seals it. Now it's just physical ability. Man on man, strength, momentum, gets his pads down correctly, gets it in there. Pickens couldn't put him back. A mismatch, defensive back on a big fullback. Omar Soto is the starting fullback today, and Scott Baldwin is the eyeback behind him. And now Mike Grant turns and yells the signal to his two setbacks. And the eyeback of Baldwin in that starting lineup makes his way out to the 28-yard line. So Mike Grant took over for the injured Mickey Joseph and won the right to start in the Citrus Bowl during the pre-bowl training period held by Tom Osborne and his staff. Soto starting in place of the suspended Lewis. Baldwin is the starting eye back. Turner and Bostic, the wide receivers. David Ideal anchors an always talented offensive line out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Now on second down, a little bit of a delay run by the eye back out to the 30 yard line. It's going to leave about third and five against this Georgia Tech defense. Rudolph, Battle, and McClary, and McClary, number 96, made the hit on that last play. Marco Coleman, one of the big play linebackers, but Calvin Tiggle has also contributed some great defensive effort. Ken Swilling, Dick Vermeil talked about him and his great ability. Willie Clay, number four, is perhaps their best cover man in that secondary. Now on third down, Grant to throw for the first time incomplete. And Nebraska goes three downs and out. Well, this has got to be a big psychological lift for Georgia Tech. Coming in here, number two in the country, but not favored to win this football game. They score first. Now they go one, two, three, and out on defense. It's got to be a confidence booster. Ramblin' Ruck with a seven-point lead here. Stiggy, Mike Stiggy, number 47 to punt it. Jason McGill, 32, awaits the return. He'll field the ball at the Ramblerick 35, down at the 39-yard line, where it will be first and 10 for Georgia Tech when you come back. Georgia Tech 7, Nebraska nothing. Well, Florida has experienced a bumper crop this fall, avoiding those hard freezes like the one that hit Central Florida last year and, I guess, California a few weeks ago. So there's going to be no shortage of fresh citrus, thanks in large part to this delicious Florida crop. I think I'll have some orange juice at halftime, Coach. Me John three. Jones running the delay, bubble by Bell, and he picks it up, and he is down at the 34-yard line. They wanted to run the deep handoff draw play out of the I formation and evidently just misplaced the ball on the insert you know what happens on those delayed plays many times the tailback is sitting back there and he's reading the defense before he gets the ball and he starts to run prior to the meeting the quarterback at the mesh point and runs away from the handoff this is a grass surface here at the citrus bowl both of these schools come off artificial carpet and nebraska in particular is not necessarily comfortable on grass that inside pitch to bell he battles out to the 37-yard line. In fact, Nebraska has lost its last four games that they have played on grass, but this is the first time that they have been on natural grass this year. Think about that. They come out of the Great Plains, they play on a carpet, well, they come I all the way to Florida, and they get some good old-fashioned natural grass. But I do think it does slow down their defensive speed just a little bit because their, their speed on defense is just excellent. You know, on that scoring drive, Georgia Tech was two of two on third downs. Now they face a third and long. And Jones with a deep drop under pressure. He slipped. Fumble recovered by the Ramblin' Wreck. That was Kenny Walker, number 57, who stormed in and knocked the ball free. Kenny Walker, you'll see to the right side of your screen, Number 57, he's been working on Daryl Jenkins, and they had a real concern whether Daryl Jenkins was going to be able to hold up there. Kenny whipped in that time, created the fumble. They overseeded with rye grass, and it could be slippery going down here. You could see Jones, when he put his plant foot, slipped, and it gave way. Now the punter, Scott Aldridge, on the field for Georgia Tech. 
A low punt. That now might, by Georgia Tech. That they might have hit a Nebraska, Nebraska player. Nebraska player. Georgia Tech is claiming that that should be their ball, but no indication from the officials. No, they give it to Nebraska. I thought it hit David White, number 96, in the back of the head. Evidently not. The officials don't make mistakes. Here's Scott Aldrich, their punter. He's a two-step punter. He gets the ball away quickly. He has not been... Oh, holy mackerel. He's he hurt, not, Dick. He he's hurt. He sprained his ankle there. But he has not been punting well the last couple days on the practice field. First and ten for Nebraska. And the ball at their own 37-yard line. Baldwin breaks a tackle and makes his way to the 39. Perhaps gained a yard on that play before he is brought down there by Georgia Tech. Alvin Tiggle, number 58, one of their very talented inside linebackers. Georgia Tech has a good backup punter, we are told, and that is Bill Weaver. Now, that should be a familiar name, especially with NFL fans up in the Detroit area because his daddy was a longtime punter for the Detroit Lions. Second down and long. Grant off a of fake with great time. Receivers were covered, however, and he throws an incompletion. And Marlon Williams, number 56, was the linebacker with the coverage responsibility. This is one of the Georgia Tech defensive coordinator's concerns. He doesn't want to allow the Nebraska quarterback to get outside in these bootleg actions. See, he's out there, because this young man, Grant, can run. See, he's out there. There's no pressure on him. He's got a lot of time. If they're going to win the football game, they're going to have to get pressure in that man's face. Derek Brown, the freshman eye back, checks in and he is over on the left wing they have a double wing formation quarterback draw by grant short of the first down so again georgia tech's defense holds against tom osborne's offense well you know georgia tech's defense through the year forced an opponent to run 62 plays before they gave up a touchdown that's the best we broke down all year Brent. that's outstanding college defense Mike Stiggy in the punt for the second time today. Jason McGill again back deep, this time standing at the Georgia Tech 15-yard line. Nebraska had great coverage on his first punt. That's a low punt, hard to feel. Takes it on the big hop. Up the middle. 18-yard return, and that gives Georgia Tech pretty fair field position when you come back. Georgia Tech scoring first here against Nebraska, and it was set up by their multi-talented quarterback, Sean Jones, out of Thomasville, Georgia. He has a brother who starts in the defensive backfield for the Georgia Bulldogs. And Sean made the family proud with this 46-yard run, setting up the Ramblin' Rex score. Well, if you can have a person in your backfield that can both run and pass and do that, a la Randall Cunningham right now, that we'll see on Saturday, what a weapon. Three times he's carried for 51 yards. First and 10, the ball is at the Ramblin' Rex 34-yard line. Jones again on first down, throwing to Rodriguez for a first down an 11 yard completion Jones to Rodriguez Bobby Rodriguez a sophomore out of Staten Island with his first catch today they're using action away from the direction of the throw to keep the defense from docking underneath that out you'll see now the receiver will be running the out pattern here this is Bobby Rodriguez very quick averages 18.3 yard reception he comes back for the ball nicely it's thrown outside just where it has to be thrown Greg Lester Brent Goolsby Come out to the right. Scotton, the lone setback, the fullback right behind Jones. He takes it off the option and bolts across midfield. And the rambling wreck have the Cornhuskers back on their heels right now. Well, the defensive coordinator for, for Nebraska, Charlie McBride, said if we can't slow them down inside because we had problem against Colorado and Oklahoma, 
we're not playing good technique football. And if we play good technique football, I think we can handle it. If not, I'm going to come after him with our blitz package. Bobby Ross, who for four years was an assistant coach for the Kansas City Chiefs, is giving Nebraska one look after another, never showing the same formation twice in a row. Now, the toss bell on the outside, and he slams ahead for another first down before Tyrone Bird brings him down. Both Nebraska safeties in preparation for this game and looking at tape, Reggie Cooper, 17, and Tyrone Bird, they get involved in stopping the run. You're going to have to come after with them with some good play action stuff, Brent. Nebraska had dreams of winning a national championship of its own, and then they stalled out in the fourth quarter against Colorado a couple of weeks later. They were beaten by Oklahoma. They come in here having lost two of their last three down mentally tom osborne trying to get this team back together again jones again on first down rolling to the left intercepted. intercepted by nebraska the first turnover and it was bruce pickens on that far side he jumps outside on a play action rollout pass Makes the fake, tries to freeze the linebackers. Pressure underneath by Walker. They try to block him there. He throws it. And the problem with throwing a ball in the direction you're rolling, you are always pulling the defense with you. It makes it easier to intercept it. Good job by Bruce Pickens. The second one this year. You understand what I'm talking about, Brett? When you roll out and throw in the direction you're rolling, the defense is changing from behind you. They're running in the direction of the throw. They'll get an extra step on that ball. I believe we have a penalty after. That was following the interception. So Nebraska has possession, but the ball is brought back to the Nebraska 22-yard line. Here's what I'm talking about. See now the quarterback rolling, rolling, rolling around. Now watch all the defenders in white. They're all still running with him in that direction. And the ball's thrown in that direction. They have that one extra step. Baldwin is the eye back. And Grant uses his fullback on first down, and he comes out to the 29-yard line. Omar Soto, the junior from Miami. <laughs> He's from Miami. I asked him how he liked Lincoln, Nebraska. He said it's different. He's just recently got married, and his wife is having a hard time adjusting to it. Now, Cuban descent. He loved the Nebraska football program, though. He likes playing football there. Should open up a Cuban restaurant out there. Lincoln, <laughs> oh, give me an idea. You made it. Second down. Here's the toss to Baldwin. They stacked up at that line of scrimmage. And again, this is going to leave Nebraska with third and long. Marco Coleman was there defensively. You know, Nebraska has been 48% efficient in converting on third down situations. I don't have a breakdown, though, that separates third and five from third and one. I think they're a lot better in that run in third and one situation. Grant has misfired on his two earlier passes. Third and five for Nebraska. Turner steps in motion. He brought the play in, and he goes out and couldn't hold on. Three and out again, and Stiggy will punt for the third time here today for Nebraska. Turner is a gifted receiver. You get the ball in his hand, he can run like a running back. Very impressed with him on the practice field the other day. Again, their short rollout. He gets pressure in his face right off the bat. Johnson, number 48, gets a little hands up in front of him. He throws the incomplete ball right behind him. Tough to make that catch running away from it going behind you. Bobby Ross was once also a special teams coach. And sometimes during the game, he'll come after a punter. This time, they set up a return. McGill is driven back to the 21-yard line. Hammer at the 25-yard line. Only a four-yard return as Johnny Mitchell, the freshman tight end out of Chicago Simeon High School, comes down with great coverage on the punt team, and it'll be Georgia Tech ball leading it by a touchdown. You know, Bobby Ross said the reason they're right now an undefeated football team, they finished strong last year with four straight wins, but this year... They were much better in the turnover category, being plus 14 coming into this football game. They're not turning the ball over. They cut down on penalties, and their kicking game really improved. Now in the Florida heat, Bobby Ross will go with two fresh running backs, Carl Lawson and Jeff Wright. Lawson is 22. Wright is 35. 
showing motion, splitting the backs, and throwing to right on first down. It is now obvious that Bobby Ross and his assistants have decided to throw frequently on first down against this Nebraska defense. Well, as, as Coach Ralph Friedman, the offensive coordinator, said yesterday, we aren't going to sit and wait for things to happen. We're going to make it. We may never be in this situation again playing for a national championship. We don't want to finish the ball game saying, I wish I would have. Georgia Tech, the lone unbeaten team, tied once by North Carolina. That game was at Chapel Hill. Scott Sisson able to tie it in the waning seconds. This Georgia Tech team has been a clutch team all year long. They've come through in the fourth quarter. Now they lead Nebraska by seven points. On a delay, they bring Jeff Wright. Pat Engelbert being credited with the tackle for Nebraska. A lot of bulls coming your way on ABC. Next, we'll send you out to the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy. Oh, this could have been a game for the national championship. You bet. Then Washington upset by UCLA up in Seattle. That's the best football team I saw all year with the University of Washington. Then tonight, I don't think Al and Dan, Frank even bothered to go home. They just stayed there last <laughs> night. Game. Virginia and Tennessee coming up a little bit later. Virginia with a whole lot to prove in that one. Jones with a slick move on the inside. Pops Good it in the hands of his tight end, Covington. And that was Mike Kroll hitting him first. Again, that was an example, friend, of uh, trying to stay with the game plan, misdirect the defense, come out with the ball the other way. Fourth down, and they will change punters. Georgia Tech does change punters, and Tony Garrity, a senior out of Morrow, Georgia, comes in. Aldridge injured an ankle. It was being taped on the sideline. So Garrity now Ooh. comes in, and he may stay in. <laughs> hey, what a beautiful punt that nice is. Tyrone oh, Hughes down at the 32-yard line. Whew. They just missed a clip. 10-yard return off a 45-yard punt. So it will be first and ten again for the Cornhuskers. Trailing Georgia Tech by 7-0. 70,000 on hand at the Citrus Bowl, a facility that has been expanded. Back in the old days, you might remember the name of this bowl as the Tangerine Bowl. I think Nebraska has got to get into their option game. That's what I think they do best, and that's the toughest thing to defense, in my opinion. That's Turner stepping in motion. Instead, they toss the ball from the eye back. His best run of the day. Out of bounds on the far side of the 40-yard line with Curly Day, the boundary cornerback, getting him out for Georgia Tech. You notice when they toss the ball deep, the tailback does not run parallel to the line of scrimmage or to the sideline. They are a downhill offense. As soon as they get the football, they head toward the line of scrimmage. Now, Georgia Tech would love to keep them running toward the sideline. Their best first down effort of the day. This is what Georgia Tech's defensive assistant did not want. Second and short for Nebraska. They can turn it into a four down football game if they can keep this up. Grant again barking the signal call to the two backs who are behind him. Soto leads Baldwin into the middle and he slams toward a first down. We'll see where they spot it. Well, in the. In the the Nebraska situation, no one second guesses the offensive coordinator because he's the head coach. <laughs> Many times when you're on a coaching staff, the offensive coordinator will be second guessed. But if you're the head coach, the assistant coaches very seldom are critical. So Georgia Tech's defense held Nebraska without a first down until 155 left in the opening quarter. This is their initial first down, and it was set up by Baldwin's run on first and ten, the eye back. This time, Grant brings the option, and Georgia Tech was ready. It'll Good be pursuit. second and long. That's what I was waiting for. I was waiting for this form of option. Georgia Tech proves that they can stop it, but it is another dimension. You really have to be disciplined to stop correctly. Mickey Joseph was the starting quarterback for Nebraska until he went down with a serious leg injury against Oklahoma. And so Mike Grant beat out Tom Haas during the week leading up to the Citrus Bowl. And Grant now facing second and long under pressure. He will not get it off. They blitz him, and Thomas Bulkham, the strong safety, hammers him down. 
Never saw him coming until it was too late. And they don't do that a lot. They don't do that a lot. You'll see coming from the end zone now, pressure from both sides, but Balcom gets it. Here he is. That's his second sack on the year, so he hasn't done that very often. And a good call. yard loss. Very good call by the defensive coordinator, George O'Leary. Third down and a bunch now for the Cornhuskers. The ball at their own 29. They need to get to the Ramblin' Rex 47 for a first down. Grant will take it right straight back. With Coleman coming, he throws incomplete. Threw a little bit too high that time. Fred, I read a little disappointment in offensive players going off the field. Just, just watching them go off the field with their hats down. Uh, they're either disappointed or surprised. And they will punt again. Stiggy, the busiest of the Cornhuskers. McGill to return again. And his fourth punt is Ooh, underway. That's, that's the kind you returnable. like to return. McGill's got it at the 30 now. Looking to get to the outside, and he is brought down at the 36-yard line, again by Johnny Mitchell. We'll see that talented tight end before long, too. They'll start trying to get the ball in his hands. They'll have to if they're going to move it. Mark Jones, what's up downstairs? Well, guys, right behind the Georgia bench, their secondary feels that they can intimidate the receivers from Nebraska. They're walking around saying that they can knock their heads off, and so far they've done uh, just about that, really holding on defense. And it has settled into a defensive struggle, hasn't it? Seven nothing, Georgia Tech, with a victory. Stephen Scotton and William Bell check back in and show up in the eye. And again on first down, off the going, deep. going deep off the middle. What's Rodriguez? Got it. Forty-six yards to Rodriguez. You're going to see if Rodriguez come down here and make a slight hesitation move, freeze the corner, then go to the post for the big play. Play action pass. Now he makes a slight hesitation move right there. See the little hop step? Then he takes off, goes deep, gets inside Pickens right there, makes the great catch, not throwing perfectly, but close enough to catch. And Pickens is shaken up. Pickens is their best coverage man transferred from Coffeyville Junior College came out with five pass interceptions came into this ball game with four pass interceptions in his career at Nebraska their best pass defender see again what the play action does it many times helps freeze the safety inside and the corner gets no help inside see the pump fake see the pump fake that can help as well he comes down no safety help inside he's all alone He's their big play man, and they get it to him for 45 yards, and the quarter comes to an end. Georgia Tech seeking a national championship, leading by seven and threatening again. The Florida Citrus Bowl, brought to you by Oldsmobile. Stop by your Oldsmobile dealer and see what's new from the new generation of old. The Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida on a simply beautiful New Year's Day. 7-0, Georgia Tech unbeaten and leading 19th rank Nebraska. They came in an underdog. Elsewhere, Michigan coming back from the disappointment that they experienced midway through the season, hammering Mississippi, Clemson all over Illinois, and Miami beating the Longhorns by six. That Clemson score makes the ACC uh, conference just a, look, a little tougher, don't it? Yeah, they kept saying that Georgia Tech didn't play anybody this year. I've been reading this now for about four weeks. Here's the handoff now to right. Make that bell. Let me check that. That was number 36, and he gets down to the 11-yard line. Reggie Cooper bringing him down there. William Bell, the sophomore out of Miami, one that got away from the Canes. 
They're crossing the running backs. Again, a counteraction in the backfield trying to freeze those linebackers. Here's Kenny Walker, left center of your screen, number 57. He's a... Hey, they're double teaming him. That takes two people to block him. Good job. And that's not a bad job of whipping the double team. You don't have to whip it. Just try to hold as much ground as you can. Second down for Georgia Tech. Three yards for the first down. They run that delay, and that's the fullback, Stephen Scott, and he was hit by Mike Petko, the junior from Anaheim. Good time to come after him down there. That was a good call by Coach Charlie McBride, the defensive coordinator. Mike Petko from Servite High School in California visited with his parents yesterday. David Kathy Petko came out here. He said, it costs a lot of money to come to this ball game. It is third down at the Nebraska 15-yard line. Georgia Tech can get a first down at the nine. In this situation, Coach Ross frequently likes to get Jones on the boundary and put pressure with his running, scrambling quarterback on that defense, giving him the option of throwing or running. Let's see what he elects to do here. They show blitz. They're coming. And there is a penalty marker down. There. Actually, Sean Jones right then should have called timeout. They were fouled up. They were having a hard time getting lined up. And it just, it, it, something broke down. It's obvious. Call timeout. Don't waste the play. You can see Petko lined up right up in there. No one picked him up. Here he goes. Normally, you have a gap rule. As soon as a man jumps in your gap, you'll give a gap call. Everybody will come down and fill those inside gaps. You'll see Petko, middle, middle of your screen. There he goes, number 99. No one touches him. You ought to get the sack. And that will signal the arrival of Scott Sisson. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. So a fourth down field goal attempt. And Aldridge limps back out, sprained ankle and all. He is the holder. So he is able to come out, and he will hold for this 37-yard field goal attempt by Scott Sisson. Score stays at 7 nothing. Nebraska survives a threat by Georgia Tech. They'll take over, trailing it by seven points. In the first quarter, it was all Georgia Tech. 69 yards passing to none for Nebraska. Grant went 0 for 4 and leaves the game. As Tom Haas, the junior from Aurora, Nebraska, checks in for the Cornhaskers. And this will be his first play of the afternoon. And he runs the eye back out to the 22-yard line. And fumble, Georgia Tech has got it. to seat the ball, put it in that home in that, that basket, and hang on to it. Take a look. See, it's a deep handoff right there. He's got it right there. Got it under the right arm. It's gotten in. Actually, there it is. Still the right arm. He lets it get out away from the body. He then gets it stripped. Got to keep it tucked in there. Georgia Tech has run five times and thrown five times, and that was Kenny Walker claiming that he was pulled offside. Being a deaf player, there's no way they could accuse him of jumping the count. He read it right. Offensive tackle must have moved. Bobby Ross is a little upset about that. Lower left hand, right here, she's 57 there. Yes, yes. Daryl Jenkins, number 66, did flinch. It is so interesting with people that have a handicap how finely tuned their other instincts are. Oh, you bet. Kenny Walker can see anything along that line of scrimmage. Just a remarkable story. Well, he has 21 tackles for a loss this season alone. So you know he's quick, and he gets in that, that backfield. Suffering from spinal meningitis. He was two years old, lost his hearing. He is without 90% of his hearing. He'll look down the line and watch the snap. He was a stand-up linebacker. 
They made him a down lineman so he can come off that ball quickly. He's a great pass rusher. Now dropped over the middle by Jones, and that was to Emmett Merchant, his first reception of the game. And again, it was Petco who defended the play for Nebraska. Georgia Tech has some gifted athletes. For example, in that Emmett Merchant, they drop him a little short one, but as a wide receiver, but he was a fine, fine high school running back. So if you give this receiver that short pass, possibly he has the ability to take it and run it up into the end zone. They get the five yards back from the penalty. It'll be second and ten now. Bell is the eye back. He's behind Scott. Jones, the quarterback. Slot formation to the left. Georgia Tech getting scoring chances here in the first half. On the roll, Jones, the Merchant touchdown! Again, that play-action pass frees the linebackers inside, just holds Petco, he keeps rolling outside, no pressure in his face, throws the corner pattern right where you have to throw it, high the outside he goes up to its highest point over bird number eight makes the touchdown reception take another look at it and before we do that we'll watch Sisson's extra point he hammers this one through to make it a two touchdown lead by the unbeaten rambling wreck Emmett Merchant on a 22 yard catch a pass thrown by Sean Jones here it is. You'll see what the play action does to the linebackers. 99. Now watch him freeze him right in there. He hesitates. He hesitates. He can't get in there. Can't get in front of that quarterback. Get pressure on him. There it is. Nice throw. Nice catch. High into the outside. Tough on that safety. Number eight. Tyrone Bird. And the underdog. And unbeaten. Georgia Tech. Leading 14 to nothing. Over Nebraska and starting to make a very convincing argument that if they win here today, there is no doubt that they are number one. Think about it for a minute. Brigham Young won a national championship because they were the unbeaten team. No one says that you're the best team. You've got to prove that on the field. And since they don't have a playoff, if you alone are the only unbeaten team, that's got to convince a whole lot of folks. Well, you're right, Brandon. See, can't, uh, Nebraska right now has 22 yards total rushing yards. They led the Big 8 with 340 yards a game rushing. Number two in the country rushing. If they're going to beat you, they have to run the football. Waters to kick it off. And Hughes is not returning. It'll be Turner and Brown back deep from the Cornhuskers. So they're leading return man because he's nicked up. This will be Turner. Hesitate, thinks about it. Now he decides to get out. And he'll be short of the 20-yard line. Good Down kick coverage to Mark Jones. Mark? Well, we'll get back to him when we get him in a better position so he can hear us up here. Meanwhile, Nebraska will take over, trailing it 14 to nothing. Tom Haas is the second quarterback used by Coach Osborne and his staff here this afternoon. Tom Haas was a walk-on in 1987, was not given a scholarship until he worked his way onto the squad. He's only thrown seven passes this year, coming into this ballgame, completed two of them. Soto and Baldwin continue to operate at running back for Nebraska. They line up two tight ends. They run the option. Baldwin is hit first by Clay. Clay got the first lick on Baldwin. And he was the ball carrier running that option play, and it was well defended by the cornerback. Did a real nice job. They run the fake inside, as you'll see here. Watch him fake the fullback inside. Now he comes down the line of scrimmage. The pitch is forced right there. He gets it out. Looks like it's clean. The corner had rolled up, meaning playing the short outside one fourth. Got up there and made the play. Well, the average starting field position, Nebraska at its own 25, and Georgia Tech its own 41. Huge difference there. Nebraska stalled inside its own 20. And Hawes, under pressure, drops off the screen pass. And there's a penalty marker and a fumble also. The loose ball recovered by Clay of Georgia Tech at the 45. There was a penalty flag thrown at the 30. Soto, the ball carrier that time, he was the receiver on the screen pass. 
I think the turf created the fumble. I think he hit the ground and fumbled. Yeah, that might be a penalty. Swilling uh, double teamed and uh, taken down on that play. So Nebraska keeps the ball, but they will be penalized. Holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. One way to stop an all American <laughs> signal. I tell you, swelling is so big and fluid as an athlete. He, he may actually, as he continues to move, uh, mature, grow into a linebacker position because he's 6'3", 236 right now, bigger than a lot of NFL linebackers. His cousin, Pat Swilling, the fine linebacker for New Orleans, can't be much bigger. Pat Swilling and the Saints winning a big one last night. They go to the playoffs. They'll play the Chicago Bears next weekend. Philadelphia and Washington on Saturday. Followed by Kansas City at Miami. A splendid doubleheader coming your way on ABC. Soto, good defense. Up and down at the 20-yard line. It's going to be third and long for the Cornhuskers. Marco Coleman just did a real nice job on this. You'll see him number 95. He'll be right over here. Watch him come down and meet this play defensively. Good technique. He stops the guard. Constricts it right there. No place to go up inside. Good job by Marco Coleman. Derek Brown now into the game. That's him going in motion behind Haas. Straight back. Incomplete. Brown couldn't hold on. Threw it behind him. You get the ball in Derek Brown's hand in an open field situation, he can put it down the end zone. He's a freshman, a true freshman, but a gifted runner. Nebraska has been in this environment before. They know how to battle back. I wouldn't start writing them off too soon. Mike Stiggy. Standing at the Nebraska six-yard line, and McGill set to return it for Georgia Tech. This should give him favorable field position again with a two-touchdown lead. Signaling for the fair catch. Oh, seven, and he is hit. An infraction. Stupid. Another mistake by Nebraska. That was Scott Baldwin on the eye back. I can't believe he did that. He must have just lost all sight of him to be, was pushed into him, one or the other blocked into him. Oh. No, that's not good football. You're beating yourself when you do that. We're going to take a break. Georgia Tech with a two-touchdown lead and threatening again. Well, you are looking at Shamu being shot from the airship Shamu representing the SeaWorld of Florida here at the Orlando area. SeaWorld blimp is Georgia Tech's Goodyear blimp. And the reason why is that that was the blimp that was up there when they came back to beat Virginia. So it's the good luck charm. <laughs> Tell you their good luck charm right now is the quarterback John Jones. He's their good luck charm. First and ten. Leading by two touchdowns. Bell, a penalty marker is thrown here on the near side. Good job by Walker coming down from the backside that time. Boy, is he quick. That was great that I was able to give two blimps credit there at once. <laughs> <laughs> the battle of the blimp wars continuing here in, uh, in central Florida. The league of motion. The man in motion moved toward the line of scrimmage prior to the snap. Bobby Ross. Boy, has he done a great job. You know, he's done a great job everywhere he's been. We were talking about that this morning at breakfast. Citadel, Maryland. He's, he's done a good job. The legal procedure. And almost went back to the NFL the offense, as an assistant coach up in Buffalo. The, line of scrimmage. the penalty's declined. Second down. He is coaching with a very heavy heart here today. A story that we want to tell you. His mother is in critical condition this afternoon, and Bobby, instead of sticking around and paying any attention at all,
to the Colorado Notre Dame game later today is going to get on a jet and immediately return home to see her. Second down and 11. Jones on the roll. Another penalty marker comes out. A diving catch incomplete and out of bounds. But there is a penalty flag which was thrown by the umpire back at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, many times coaches tell you what they're going to do with the ball in their game plan, and then they don't do it. Let's see what he has to say. But offensive coordinator Ralph Fridgen told us what he was going to do with the ball, and boy, is he sticking to what he said. Misdirect and come out with the football. Misdirect and hand off the football. Four years ago, the Georgia Tech football program was in disarray. Won only two games, then the next year won three, and then slowly, Bobby Ross started to bring his kind of athletes into Georgia Tech, and have they ever turned it around? Well, remember, you and I did his last game at Maryland against Virginia. After the game, he says, uh, yeah, Dick, what do you think? Should I, should I stay in Maryland or should I leave? I said, oh, you ought to stay in Maryland. You've invested a lot of time there. You've got it going, you know, stay and overcome the problems. <laughs> Good thing he didn't listen, huh? <laughs> tell you that Atlanta school in general has fabulous athletic programs right now. Kenny Anderson of the basketball team made its way to the Final Four. They're back in the top 25. Golf team is ranked number one. Baseball team in the top five. Jones with some footing difficulty runs it back to the line of scrimmage, and another penalty flag comes down. I think they called holding on the offensive right tackle, Big Mike Mooney. Now, Bobby Ross said his team really licked the penalty problem this year, averaging only five penalties a game, but he's had a few penalties on him this time. Bobby Ross in Georgia Tech leading Nebraska 14-0, 9 to go here in the first half. The overhead view of the sold-out Citrus Bowl on this beautiful New Year's afternoon. A year ago, it was chilly down here for the Illinois-Virginia game. Well, it was a lot cooler than it is here. We were down on the field in our uh, pregame practice warm-up there. It didn't take much to warm up. 20 yards to go. Third down for Jones. Gets his time. Throws complete. And a first down to Brent Goolsby, the sophomore from Marietta. A 27-yard gain on third and 20. Jones making all the big plays here this afternoon. Well, Nebraska went double zone, meaning two deep safeties. for 123 yards. The safety had rolled up. He was able to get it to him. Now a fake by Jones, but that did not fool Mike Kroll, number 88. Jones kicking. Stopped by Mike Kroll. Lost a five on the play. The five-yard loss, so it'll be second down and 15. The ball back at the Nebraska 25-yard line. Jones eyeing that defense. And there was contact made. Pat Engelbert. Another mistake by the Cornhuskers here in the first half. Tom Osborne, although you'd never know it looking at him at the sideline, has to be just livid with the performance of his team here today. Michigan all over Mississippi. And Clemson for the ACC. 
Meanwhile, Miami shutting out Texas. So just about everything is coming up Georgia Tech's way so far. I'm talking in spot by. There's the swing to Bell on the outside, and he breaks inside the five-yard line. 18-yard gain, making it first and goal for Georgia Tech. right side of the screen he gets back and he's laying it off there the linebackers pressuring up inside got picked off inside I think with a wide receiver coming down and bumping the defender coming inside out first and goal and timeout is called by Jones and all three of his timeouts left so why not use one down here in scoring position we're gonna take a break and we'll come right back in a moment Dick Vermeil, I'm Brad Musburger. Back at the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida. Unbeaten Georgia Tech 14, Nebraska nothing. Time remaining there in the first half. Tom Osborne looking at the possibility of falling behind by three touchdowns here with a first and goal. Jones to throw on first down. He's all alone for the touchdown. William Bell walks in. point by Sisson 21 to nothing two touchdown passes by Jones he's now 10 of 13 for 143 yards they started a man in motion Martin one way brought him back the other way got the attraction the defense looking at him they attracted him no one taking the back out of the backfield coming off the play action fake normally that is the outside linebackers responsibility Mr. Bell Thirty-seven yards in six plays. Two twenty-seven. And suddenly it's difficult to hear any of the doubters of the ACC and Georgia Tech <laughs> right now. The way they're moving it right now, they're collecting votes. I saw one voter, I think he's out of the Louisiana area, he voted this team number 10. He said, I just don't respect the ACC. And I hope wherever he is, he's watching this game. <laughs> Bobby Ross said, hey, the ACC, we're having a great bowl season. We've already won two games. And somebody said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. North Carolina State was in the other one. It's a Florida, Florida State. State. We're taking yeah. them all in. Turner. Oh, he's got a hole. Out to the 29-yard line. Let's take a look at that Georgia Tech schedule and give you an idea who they play. Now, when they tied North Carolina at 13, no one thought too much about this Ramblin' Wreck team. But then they went into Virginia in a great college football game and won it 41 to 38. Well, then Virginia experienced late season trouble after they lost their quarterback. But included in that list, folks, are these four bowl teams, three of which were nationally ranked when they were beaten by Georgia Tech. Now, Haas. And he is taken down by Kevin Battle. Big nose guard at 295 pounds, redshirt sophomore, industrial engineering major. Very industrious on that play. Let me follow up on the Atlantic Coast Conference because that conference has posted its best ever record against outside competition. Coming into the bowls, they were 25 and 7 against all comers in their non-conference games. So it has been a much maligned football conference this year, and a lot had to do with the fact that Virginia lost its star and struggled at the end of the season. But at one time, they were ranked number one. Haas back over the middle, and now they get it into the hands of a tight end. Johnny Mitchell 
Number 86, a 26-yard gain. Here is the young man who could bring the Cornhuskers back. Well, he has the speed of a running back. He's a freshman. He can run like a running back. Here he is right here, coming off the line of scrimmage. You're going to run play action fakes. See, frees everybody in there. He comes off clean to the right side of your screen. They're going to hit the seam down there in between the double safeties. There it is. Does a really nice job of getting the ball to him. Big guy, co-freshman player of the year offensively in the Big Eight. And that completion could do a whole lot for Tom Haas' confidence level right now. Hitting Mitchell. First and ten, the ball inside the Georgia Tech 45. So Nebraska making its best threat of the day so far. They have really been stymied. And Turner coming around from his wingback spot and out of bounds at the 31. Let's go down to Mark Jones. Mark? Guys, just a few moments ago, Coach Tom Osborne gathered his team together, gave them a very spirited pep talk. After that, Nate Turner came over to me and said that they feel very slow and very sluggish out there. Nobody knows what the cause of that is. It could be the heat. You see the fans here, or it could be the natural surface. Whatever it is, it is a mood of doom and gloom down here on the Nebraska side. Guys? Well, Tom Osborne took a different approach to this ball game. You know, he worked them a lot, huh? a lot tougher than he normally has. You know, maybe that's it. I kind of doubt it. off of fake rolling to the left you got Going it back Mitchell Nebraska coming back he is the next Keith Jackson of the big eight a ton of ability Again, it's the play action. He's at the top of your screen. Number, no, the bottom of your screen, number 86, coming off the play action, crossing the field, following the quarterback down there. Now they had the out pattern going on top of your screen. He comes down the seam right there. There he goes in for the touchdown. And the funny thing is, he had caught 11 balls coming into this game, seven of them which were touchdowns. Very productive. And here come the Cornhuskers. Greg Barrios adds the extra point. And because of that young man, the Huskers are down by only 14 now. Well, here it's 21-7, 6.21 to go in the second. And coming up Sunday at 1 Eastern, we're going to have the World Swimming and Diving Championships on ABC. Then at 3 Eastern, the PGA's and Senior Tour's finest tee it up for the Infinity Tournament Champions of Golf. And live coverage there begins Sunday on ABC. Here it's the Citrus Bowl, the first of our three bowl game festival coming your way. The Rose Bowl will be next, and then the Sugar Bowl. This is Kevin Tisdale returning out to the 25 and makes his way to the 31-yard line, a superb return. Kevin Tisdale is an interesting story. He's not on scholarship. He walked on. He asked for an opportunity to return kicks. They gave him to him. Heck, he has an 89-yarder or 87-yarder. He's doing a real good job. He goes on scholarship after this ball game. Right now, Dick Vermeil, we'd like to welcome those folks who enjoyed the Wolverines of Michigan beating Mississippi 35 to 3. I'm sure some of those old Miss fans left early on that one. Another win for the Big Ten, Michigan State beating USC in the John Hancock Bowl, putting back-to-back -back victories on the table. Maybe Iowa will be able to stick with Washington, which is a nine-point favorite coming up later in the Rose Bowl. Here it is Georgia Tech 21, Nebraska 7. And, and Dick, for those folks who have just joined us and might not have seen how this game has unfolded, why don't you give everybody a little overview on what we're seeing? Well, what we have seen here is a young quarterback, sophomore quarterback, and Sean Jones that has done it all year, is to lead an offense that has confused the defensive scheme of Nebraska. Also, one big broken play and scramble situation, but he is doing an excellent job of throwing the ball and running the ball. He has passed for 143 yards already against Nebraska. His season average is 185, and here he is getting more yards. Bubble, Nebraska ball at midfield. By turning the ball over, Brent, what they're doing is they're, they're giving Nebraska life. Bruce Pickens recovering the fumble by Anthony Rice. 
Well-executed offensive play, play action fake, crossing tight end. Now watch, they'll run a nice fake in here. Tie up all the linebackers, they don't know where it's coming. The receiver crosses, he hits him, he gets it tucked away there nice. And the right hand, now he's got him loose. Never did really get it tucked away nicely. Good defense, they stripped it, Pickens has it, first down. Now the key for Nebraska, the last time they handled the ball, was Johnny Mitchell, number 86. And they have taken him out of the game right now for this play as Nate Turner comes in motion toward Haas. The fake on the end around. Haas going deep to Bostic and incomplete at the 10-yard line. John Bostic, the junior from Belleville, Washington. What they do with the fake reverse like this, you'll see a fake reverse, what they're trying to do. You'll see the back right here come in. He'll fake to in there. What they're trying to do is to freeze the safety and sneak a man in behind him. Now watch the fake. They hope the safety takes that bite. Now he's looking for the post pattern in behind that safety's responsibility. He got in there. He just overthrew him. Second and ten for Haas. And this time the freshman breaks free. He will catch him. Derek Brown for the Nebraska touchdown. deliver a message of their own. The eye cutback, normally when, uh, when an eye cutback play breaks like that, the backside of the defense, either the defensive tackle or linebacker, didn't make the play. You'll see he starts left to the screen, and he makes the cutback right there in that little crack, and he has great speed. He ran for 2,400 yards a year ago as a senior at Servite High School in Orange County, California. 50 yards for Brown. Mario. Nebraska to within seven. At one point it was 21 to nothing, and then the Cornhuskers came roaring back. I wonder what Coach Osborne said to him in that huddle over there. <laughs> Take a look at this young man. Watch the footwork here. He has good speed, good footwork, good body balance. He just outruns everybody, and he is only a true freshman. Uh, he liked that. He's learning that early, don't they? They learn all that stuff, those Giants. And... So a great comeback here in the first half. And that was the longest run allowed by the Georgia Tech defense this year. A 50-yard bolt by Brown. As Osborne changes quarterbacks, going to Tom Haas. He throws a touchdown pass to Mitchell. Then he switches eye backs. Remember, it was Baldwin who hammered a Georgia Tech receiver on a punt. He has elected to go with Brown. Earlier, he suspended four players from the game, including his injured quarterback. And now, Nebraska has clawed its way back into this one. A dandy here in the Citrus Bowl. Brent, the thing to do, I think, Johnny Mitchell, the freshman tight end, made the big play. Derek Brown, the freshman tailback, makes the big play. Let the young kids play, and they can't win for you sitting on the bench. Byron Bennett with the ball on the tee for Nebraska. Still five minutes to go in the first half. At one point, it was all Georgia Tech. Now, Nebraska has taken hold of the ball game. Trying to get some coverage, and they do again. Spectacular kick coverage that time. The ball was put down. They're ruling there that was he was on the fumble, turf. But he may have been down. But Nebraska's mental attitude has really changed. The one big play to the tight end, the fumble, the big run, it's a different outfit out there mentally. Tom Quinn and his crew out of the Big Ten ruling that the ball was down. So it will be Georgia Tech ball on their own 19-yard line. This is their worst starting field position of the day. Now, will the defense pick up the initiative for the Cornhuskers? If I were Charlie McBride, I'd come after him. Hey, here aggressive right now, come after him. Georgia Tech lines up in that eye. Jones has been their main weapon at quarterback. And he runs Bell, who bolts out to the 25-yard line. Good first down run by Bell. Reggie Cooper is missing from that defensive backfield, a possible concussion. So it's possible that they will be out without him the rest of the way. Tyrone Leggett. 
is out there on the field in that defensive secondary. Curtis Cotton is also playing. Cotton has replaced him. Now the toss is the bell. Cut off as he tried to sweep outside to the right. It'll be short of the first down. It's going to be a third down for Georgia Tech. Once leading by 21 points and now up by only seven. Boy, what a drastic change. Look at that, 136 yards, Nebraska, Georgia Tech, 96. A little while ago, Nebraska had 22 yards running. Third and two for Georgia Tech. He's running an audible at the line of the scrimmage. Trying to get the call to the outside wide receivers. Nebraska showing blitz. They're gonna come after Bell, who stepped oh. up. With the wait and see where they spot this ball. This is going to be critical. Tyrone Bird delivered a heck of a blow for the Cornhuskers, but he may have already been to the 30-yard line. No, I don't think he was. I don't know. You'll see Mike Petko, 99. He's getting ready. He's almost too early. All right, there's Pat Tyrants. It's Pat Tyrants takes the fullback on. Here comes Bird. Great oh, play. he ricochets off. I don't know how they're going to. They have to call that back there. Absolutely. Yeah. They have forced the Georgia Tech punt. He did not get to the 30. And Tony Garrity is in it. Max defense gets the job done for Nebraska. Well, he came after him with that blitz. Beautiful punt. Uh, they roughed the kicker. Loose down there, and Georgia Tech has the ball at the 21-yard line. But there is a penalty flag. Running There's into the kicker. Flag. Regardless, Georgia Tech is going to have the ball. They have the choice. Right, right there, Michael the Crow ran into him right there. That's running into the kicker. You can't do that. Caught his foot, and Michael Crow is a great football player. But at the other end, there was a fumble. Bumble. Turner and Hughes were having the trouble communicating. Here it is. The ball is not handled cleanly, and Jay Martin, number 80, gives the rambling wreck a first and 10 at the Nebraska 22. What a spectacular first half this has been here so far in Orlando. And Turner and Hughes are two very experienced return people led the the big eight in punt return as a team back there they shouldn't make those kind of mistakes it's one of those you got it no i'll take it no i'll take it you got it and that's a big reason why they were unbeaten georgia tech plus 14 boy that computes to be worth a lot of points about 57. scott is the fullback jeff wright has now checked in as the tailback this is right. He slips free of the first tackle and gets to the 19-yard line. Pat Tyrants almost had him back there, Brett. You'll see Pat Tyrants scraping off from the left top of your screen. Here he is coming right up inside there. He just about has him. He scripts away from him. Does a good job. Pat Tyrants, pre-med student. Graduated right before he came to the bowl game practice sessions. Second down and seven. Again, motion. And Jones straight back. Oh, he dropped it. Played. The ball was dropped by Merchant. He is upset. Little slant pattern inside the corner. Quick three-step drop. Changing the strength of the formation. Setting the tight end one side, then going the other way. Trying to get the secondary to rotate. Three-step drop, plant the foot, throw it. Doesn't take very long to get it off. Got to make that catch. Jones had hit nine in a row before number 10 was dropped. Now it'll be third down and seven. Lester, one of the wide receivers, along with Gilchrist. They come to the left. Merchant goes out to the right. Audible. Audible. Straight back. Out of bounds. Out of bounds and incomplete. The receiver was Lester. He saw the man-to-man -man coverage, and he wanted to hit the corner pattern to the slot man. I thought the slot man ran the corner pattern way too shallow. 
You'll see this from the end zone. He'd already called his audible. He just pops it over there. He's laying it up outside to the corner, a short corner, but he got it up there too high. See, no way he can get both feet down. But I'll tell you, in the college game, you've only got to get one down. That's right. And I'm not so sure that one wasn't down. Scott Sisson to attempt a 37-yard field goal. He has missed one earlier in the game, but this time, Sisson comes through. 24 to 14, the lead is 10. You know, Scott Sisson has been one of those guys this year. He only kicked 65% field goals, but he's been one of those guys that, that's been able to make the big field goal at the end of the game. He's won four ball games for him with a field goal in the final seconds. Well, let's remind you what's coming up on our prime time schedule here on ABC. Here it's the first of our three bowl games on this New Year's Day. The Rose Bowl will be coming up next. Keith Jackson and Bob Greasy cover the Washington-Iowa game. 24 to 14. Turner from the one for Nebraska with the kickoff. Down at the 27-yard line where it'll be first and 10. A penalty flag is down. 144 on the clock. side. Quinn and his crew straightening it out now. Walking below the waist during the run. Half the distance penalty from the 27-yard line. First down. Tommy Hawes has got to be gaining a little confidence from the contribution he's made as a quarterback coming in here in the second quarter. Oz hands off to the freshman who sprinted 50 yards his last time out. And so Saturday, the NFL playoffs kick off on ABC. First time that ABC has had a playoff doubleheader. Dick Wu will be in your hometown, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Washington Redskins in game one. Then Allen and the gang will be down in Miami for the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins. That's coming your way. We will start our coverage Saturday at noon Eastern time here on ABC. One minute and ten seconds. They fake, fake the end around. Still trying to shake Derek Brown free one more time. Oh, I did. He has that little flash about him. As soon as he touches the ball, you start anticipating the big run. Thirty-eight points scored here in the first half. Nebraska came into the game favored by two. They were also ranked 19th. This is the 22nd straight year that the Cornhuskers have come to a bowl game. That's a record. And they have battled their way back in this one, but that time it was all Marlon Williams. Very good play. Good penetration. They didn't get him blocked. Many times a, a young back will try to cut a linebacker coming like that, and if you don't get him down on the ground, you're in trouble. Marlon Williams, left-hand corner of your screen. There he is. Running back Soto trying to get him down there. Doesn't get him down. He kicks him out. Keeps his feet, showing his athletic ability. Keeps coming. Coverage took away the pattern. Sack. Second down and long. The final seconds ticking away here in the first half. Oz will run the clock out. Quarterback draw. And that's going to end our first half.
24-14, and let's see how to mark down. Mark? Coach, you had, a, you had a 21 point lead. You're going to the locker room, leading 24 to 14. Aside from a couple of big plays that you gave up, you have to feel good about the way that you played defensively. Well, I think that we chose to show you their big play strike and ability with the tremendous skill people they have. We can't relax on defense at one time. I thought we played the long ball that got them the momentum very poorly. We should have come back and played that much better. You seem to have lost a little bit of momentum offensively after they scored. No, I think we'll get that back. We just haven't executed as well as we're capable of executing. We made a couple of mistakes that we don't normally make. Thanks a lot for joining us, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Brent, Dick, All back right, to you. Mark, thank you very much. So Bobby Ross and the Ramblin' Rex take a lead into the locker room, and we'll come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Chris Bowl, brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. Well, here at the Citrus Bowl, Georgia Tech jumped ahead 21 to nothing. Then Nebraska struck for two quick touchdowns in the second quarter, made it 21 to 14. And then a field goal by the Rambling Wreck late in the second quarter left them 10 points ahead. But as far as Nebraska is concerned, this season in the third quarter, they have outscored their opponents 112 to 20. They have been a lethal second half team. Very strong. And I think that's just, a, you know, because their athletes get warmed up, they get going, they find themselves in, in uh, desperate situations and, and they come back and rally. They have such momentum going in, Brent, at the, the end of the half. With a long halftime period, I wonder if you lose it. That was 30 minutes you were in there. Well, let's check in with Mark Jones on that issue. Mark? Well, I spoke with Coach Tom Osborne just a few moments ago. He said that at halftime, he just told the team, basically, got to get it in gear or else we're going to get blown out. But he was happy about the fact that they had two big plays that got them back into the ball game. There was a long leg. He was a little impatient. We actually asked him to join us here at halftime. And after waiting for just a few seconds, he said, sorry, guys, we got to go. He's into this ball game, and he doesn't want to wait. Guys? All right, Mark. Thank you. And Derek Brown, who delivered one of those big plays, is back to return Allen Waters' kickoff, along with Nate Turner. Brown exploded 50 yards for the Cornhuskers' second touchdown. This is Turner at the five, coming right straight up the middle behind the blocking wall. And he is out to the 29-yard line where Tom Hawes, the junior from Aurora, Nebraska, will quarterback the Cornhuskers. He replaced Mike Grant in the first half of this game. And for the ACC, it has been a splendid bowl season. Maryland was tied, but North Carolina State with a win. Clemson closing in on a victory over the Big Ten. Omar Soto and Derek Brown are the running backs. We have not seen Leotis Flowers at all. He was injured and was taken back to third string. And they have elected to come with the freshman here in the second half. And he is stopped short of the line of scrimmage by Calvin Tiggle, number 58. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> Georgia Tech. That's a good way to show how loyal you are. It's better than a tattoo anyway. <laughs> It'll grow out. Now it'll be second down and 10 for Nebraska. We start the second half, and the Cornhuskers of the Big 8 trailing Georgia Tech by 10, 24 to 14. Tech again, the only unbeaten team still standing. They were once tied by North Carolina. This is Brown, and he's very close to a first down. He is a north-south runner, meaning upfield. Doesn't spend much time going toward the sideline. When he sees the cut, he has good vision. When he sees the hole open up, here we are, end zone shot. Now watch him find the spot to run. Boom, he cuts right back up in there, accelerating. Pads go down, he runs through tackles. Good job. Big number 86 comes out the field for Osborne. And that is freshman tight end Johnny Mitchell. He's out of Simeon High School in Chicago. He scored the Cornhuskers' first touchdown, helping them come back. Double tight end. He's there at the left. Haas runs Soto into the teeth of that Georgia Tech defense, and nothing much there on first down. The critical down as far as Georgia Tech. 
was concerned coming into this game was limiting the Cornhuskers on first down. They really felt if they could get them into passing situations often enough in this ball game, they could beat them. Take away the running game, force the quarterback to beat us throwing the ball. That was their whole philosophy. Dan Pleasant into the game. Four wide receivers off a of fake. It's Haas. The blitz is coming. And it's complete but short of the first down. Nate Turner, the receiver, on the far side of the field and out of bounds. This Haas is a good athlete. He walked on, but you know, he broad jumped 24 foot, six and a half inches. They now call it long jump. That's the second best in the history of the state. Outstanding athlete. Haas, four of six for 80 yards after replacing Mike Grant. Needing three yards on this third down to keep it going. Turner stepping in motion. Haas going to keep it. Oh, brought down face with mask, a I think. flag. And that face mask penalty by Balcom will give them a first down. Got him pretty good. Again, with the quarterback able to move, run. He gets out of here, roll out. He's getting out here. Pressure. Coleman from the inside here. There it is. Oh, yeah, he really got him. That'll be a 15. Thomas Bolcom reached up there. He really got him. Personal foul. Straight snap. First down. Now they can get very animated down on that sideline. <laughs> Came to Georgia Tech from Maryland. Played quarterback back in the late 50s at BMI when you went both ways. Smashed up that nose a few times. Playing quarterback and defensive back. First and 10 inside the Georgia Tech 40-yard line. Fumble that Brown, no, took it on the pitcher. They were running down the line with the option. Boy, that was quick. I thought the ball was free. Was that quick pressure? I mean, there was a defender in the quarterback's face the minute he took the ball out, and he flipped it. It did look like a fumble. Watch it. Pressure right there. He got it out there. Good poise to get it out there. Jeremiah McClary was coming defensively for the Ramblin' wreck, and I thought sure that they had knocked the ball loose. Me too. Yeah. Second down and nine now. You get penetration inside when you're trying to run an option with a quarterback going down the line of scrimmage. It's trouble for that option. Johnny Mitchell over to the quarterback's left. Haas rolling to the right. Throws incomplete. And Mitchell draws the interference from Swilling. Swilling guilty of pass interference on the Nebraska tight end. It looked like he got there simultaneously, but Mitchell, he's, as a freshman, he's already learned all the signs and all the techniques to get the call. Roll out, he's gonna throw it right down our throat. Here it comes. Can't tell by that shot, but the officials were in a better spot than we were. Ken Swilling, he is the All-American safety. 6'3", 236 pounds. First down. An uneasy head coach of Georgia Tech. His team was up 21 to nothing in this game. Nebraska in the second quarter behind their new quarterback, Tom Haas, moved back into the game. And now it has been two big penalties against the rambling wreck. One a face mask and now pass interference. And that will give Nebraska a first and 10 at the Georgia Tech 22-yard line. Average yards on first down for Nebraska so far is only two yards a crack. They have left them in second and eight all game long. Ha ah, is keeping it, and it'll be second and long again. They didn't even get their average that time. I'm not sure that was a design play. If it was a design play, it was a sucker all the way where they were pulling everybody and he was to keep the ball. Here's the signals being given right there. Our director of statistics, Roger Riley, was all over that first down situation. 
Second down and a little over 10 yards for Osborne's Nebraska offense. Dan Pleasant is the wide receiver to Haas Wright. Quarterback is straight back over the middle and a diving reception by Turner. Just inside the 20-yard line. This will leave them with third and long. Turner is the kind of athlete, when you go on the practice field to watch the team, he automatically catches your eye as an athlete. You, you start watching him, what he does with his movement abilities, his hand-eye coordination, his ability to catch that ball softly. A very fine young athlete. Third down. Calling an audible. Brad DeBall is on the right wing. He's going to keep it, and he'll be far short of that first down. Nebraska will attempt a field goal. Greg Barrios will come onto the field, and they'll be kicking this field goal toward the zonies end here in the Citrus Bowl. There's quite a story in behind the goalpost down here. In the old days at the Tangerine Bowl, they couldn't give these seats away. So one of the promoters down here at the Citrus Bowl said, I know, let's have a promotion. Let's make it a party. Let's make it a celebration. Folks, they started about three weeks ago celebrating. Yeah. It's a 34-yard field goal. Barrios, in his career, has never missed a field goal in between 30 and 39 yards. It's blocked. Yeah. Number 98 and getting in for the rambling wreck and the field goal attempt is blocked. We'll be right back. A spectacular effort by Keith Holmes on this field goal. Watch this replay. To the right center of your screen, you'll see him standing behind the defensive line. He rushes. Now watch him leap. Great jump ability. He's way up in the air. He gets it with his left hand. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the second time he's done that this year. He did it against Virginia Tech that preserved a 6-3 to three win. Nice going there, young man. 24-14. to 14. Georgia Tech with a 10-point lead and the ball here early in the second half against Nebraska. Jones with great time on first down. Throws to his running back. has been the difference in this game so far. They were in a strong slot formation to the right. He runs a running back fake, half back to the right side of your screen. He'll come out, number 36, to the right side of your screen. He's running a seam down in there between the linebackers. Now into the safety area, he catches it. Again, the advantage of a running back catching the ball downfield. Good job, good play execution. And Wright replaces Bell, who takes a break. Here's the pitch to Wright. Getting to the outside and inside Nebraska's 45-yard line with an option pitch. Here's a freshman from the Spirit of Florida. Twenty-four points scored by Georgia Tech are the most by any opponent in the first half against a Nebraska defense. A Charlie McBride coach defense doesn't give up 24 points very often. This must be a very good offensive football team. Well, the most prolific first half of the season against the Cornhuskers, and again, only twice that they've given up more than 24 in a game, and they lost those two games. Now it is Jones on a fake toss, keeping it inside the 35-yard line. See the athletic ability that you were talking about in number 88, Michael Kroll, moving inside out. What a fine defensive play. They almost had him suckered inside. Right in the middle of your screen, there's a number 98. You can barely see him there. There he is. He stunts down inside on a stunt. They break contain. Now here comes 88 inside out on the play. Look at that ability. No wonder they're talking about him being a first-round draft choice. Nebraska with a national recruiting program. They go from Massachusetts to Southern California to get their football players out at Lincoln. They have such a great reputation of doing a great job with the athletes once they get them there, both athletically, socially, and as uh, students. 
Let's go down now and meet a very special woman in the Nebraska football program. Down we go to Mark Jones. Mark? Very special woman indeed, Brent. You know, a big cheer just moments ago when Kenny Walker made that tackle. Why? Well, this is Mimi Mann, Kenny Walker's sign language interpreter. Mimi, a very special relationship with you and Kenny. Yes, we've worked together for five years, and working with this incredible human being has given me opportunities that I never dreamed would happen. We've shared experiences that I never dreamed would happen to me. At halftime, what did you have to say to him when you were interpreting the signs? I just signed the things that the coaches were saying. There was a lot of emotion in there. The players came to understand how much they love Coach Osborne. We'll have to ask them about it. And you had a special message for your man, Kenny. I signed to Kenny as he left to go out back onto the field. I love you. All right, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Mimi Mann, guys. It has meant all the difference in the world having Mimi available for Kenny. And Mimi gets to travel to some of the all-star ball games he's going to play in, right? He's going to go to Japan. He's going to go to the East-West game in San Francisco. And he's going to go to the Senior Bowl in Mobile. And she's going to travel right along. Does she need yes. someone to carry the luggage? Yeah. <laughs> the young man, Kenny Walker. And he will someday get a chance in the National Football League. He's a senior. And he comes off the ball as soon as it is snapped. They get heat on Jones, and they sack him that time with Pat Engelbert. Real nice play from the nose guard position. An honor student in civil engineering. 3.5 GPA. Top of your screen. See him flipping there. You'll see him coming in there. Here he comes. Great big. He's actually not a great big nose guard when you consider the type of nose guards that Nebraska's had over the years. Following up on Kenny Walker and Mimi, when she first took over, as the interpreter for Walker, she had a lot of difficulty. She didn't understand football at all. So they wanted him to red dog the three gap. And it came out, according to her, like Lassie climb Mount Everest. <laughs> <laughs> so they developed their own lingo. And now they get the job done. Jones has gotten the job done inside the 20-yard line, hitting Jerry Gilchrist. 23 more yards, a first down, pulling it out on third and 18. And you know the key to that was the offensive pass protection by Daryl Jenkins, number 66, on Kenny Walker. They gave him time to get down there. They throw the post pattern, but that took a little time to get around the coverage to the left of your screen. Well, I'm not smart enough to know if this is the best football team in America, but I am smart enough to know that if they beat Nebraska, they deserve to be ranked number one with the effort they've given the Cornhuskers here this afternoon and how they've turned in an unbeaten record this year. First and ten from the 20. Got to draw. And here's Bell. Bolting free inside to the two-yard line. Very good lead block by the and Scott, number 40, on the lead draw play. They take it back, get it to him deep, get the defenders coming upfield. Linemen do a good job of sealing it off. He gets the good block. He's through. Now he's on his own. Good running ability, power. This guy is an underrated football player in the ACC. And Stephen Scott opened the way for William Bell, the sophomore from Miami. He delivered the key block. Now it is first and goal from the two-yard line. Jones will walk in. <laughs> man which they had been doing now they come out on the naked boat leg he has the option to run or pass the man was one man in the pattern they dropped off and covered him and he walks in with it should make another point about this georgia tech team this is a young football team you bet it is they have a few seniors in the offensive line scott sisson adds the extra point William Bell, who took the run there in the draw, is a sophomore. Sean Jones, a redshirt sophomore. Scott is the senior. Four touchdowns and one field goal for Georgia Tech. Wow. Back at the Citrus Bowl. 31 to 14, Georgia Tech leading Nebraska. Nebraska, remember, was down 21 to nothing in the first half, then scores two quick touchdowns. So they'll be looking for another explosion here. And Tyrone Hughes, the sophomore from New Orleans, 
back deep for the first time. Turner is not returning this kickoff. This will be Brown on the other side, the freshman. Brown looking for daylight, and he is out to the 28-yard line, where it will be first and 10 now for Nebraska. Brown stays in the game as the tailback. I'd never let him see the bench. <laughs> Just forget it where it is, buddy. And you know, we haven't seen Leotis Flowers, who was their leading rusher at 940 yards in the season. They said he was nicked up coming into this game, but he hasn't played at all. They said he was available. They started Scott Baldwin. He hasn't been back since he was whistled for a penalty when he hit a receiving man on a fair catch and cost them 15 yards. Osborne turns it over to the youngster. Hodge on the toss now to Brown. Coming to the boundary side of the short side of the field. He works his way to the 34-yard line. Good job of blocking by the tight end Mitchell over there to run that toss. He knocked the linebacker off the line of scrimmage, gave him a little cushion to turn up. Getting a little shadow over the field right now. Must be cooling off down there because it was warm in pregame warm-up. Nebraska has lost its last four games on grass. And they trail here today 31 to 14. This is the first time they have been on this surface all year long. Here's Brown, cutting in the middle of the defense and short of that first down. Met by Battle in the middle of that Georgia Tech defense. Kevin Battle, he's a big guy at 295 pounds, as we said earlier. Industrial engineering. Take a look at him. He'll be up in the right top-hand corner of your screen. He'll be working down. Here he comes. Now you'll see him. Rarity is right in the middle of it now. Boy, he'd like to run it into him. Here's the third down for the Cornhuskers. The toss to Brown, short of the first down. Now, it was in the Colorado game. In this kind of field position, when Tom Osborne gambled and went for it on fourth down, he was short. Colorado took over and exploded, but it's too early for that. We still have 3.45 to go in the third, and Osborne will not gamble. He'll send his punter onto the field. You want to talk about Colorado's chances? Remember that they were behind Nebraska going into the fourth quarter. Here, Georgia Tech has led it all the way. 31 to 14, Tech, and they're going to get the ball back. Ooh, beautiful punt. McGill driven back inside the 20. Out to the 28-yard line. A 44-yard punt, 9-yard return. We're taking a break and coming right back to Orlando. The Citrus Bowl, as seen from the airship Shamu, representing SeaWorld of Florida here in the Orlando area. Anthony Stevenson, thanks for all the fine shots up there with Hunter Harris doing the camera work. There's Shamu overhead, and this is Wright still in the game. And on first down, the Nebraska defense stands tall that time, and it will be second and long for Sean Jones. So with Dick Vermeil and Mark Jones, I'm Brent Musburger. Clemson routing Illinois in the Hall of Fame Bowl as rumors continue to circulate that John Makovic is going to move back to the NFL. Miami pummeling Texas and piling on in Big D. 26 to 3. Who would have thought that one would be a route? Second down and long. Here it has been Georgia Tech. Carl Lawson checks into the game. He is playing fullback in front of right and this will be third and long as reggie cooper led the defense now nebraska's defense has been yielding an average of 264 yards and today they have given georgia tech 316. well they're they're defending a very sophisticated offense both run and pass they execute it real well they know what they're doing great definition of purpose and everything that quarterback's doing he never looks befuddled he always knows where he's going with the football Something has to be said about Bobby Ross and his He's done a great job. Coaches. He's done a great job. And his offensive coordinator, Freidner, uh, coordinator Ralph Ridgen, and his staff, Derek Denny Smith, Terry Strzok, Pat Watson. 
Mark Henderson, they've done a great job with that offensive team. Well, they won't be happy with this. Offensive lineman moved a little bit too early, and they'll get penalized five more yards. Tom Quinn from Chicago. He heads up this Big Ten crew here today. And, of course, our bowl fest continues. Next, we're going to take you out to the granddaddy, the Rose Bowl. Iowa and Washington, who do you like in that game? Well, I tell you, if I were going to gamble, I think I'd bet on Washington. But we have seen Iowa play so well. But I, think, I believe that Washington, at the time that I saw him, was the best team in the country. And if I was going to gamble, I'd take Tennessee. The other. <laughs> <laughs> Jones on a roll now. Fires incomplete. And well defended that time. That Reggie Cooper was there, but Tyrone Leggett was in front of him. So the Sugar Bowl will have Virginia and Tennessee. That'll be our nightcap. As you watch Notre Dame and Colorado, we're not going to pretend that one's not going to go on, but as you watch it, snap on over and check in on that Sugar Bowl. Virginia might surprise you with their performance tonight, and if they come close, that would enhance Georgia Tech's chances even more if they can make a run of it. And we certainly hope that the Virginia team is healthy. That's a key thing with that ball club. So Garrity, who replaced and injured Aldridge as their putter, and Bostick returning this one to midfield for Nebraska. 33-yard punt and a four-yard return. 125 left in the third, and Georgia Tech in command. The big thing right now is for Nebraska to go with that attitude they had in the second quarter, the play-action pass, get the ball down the seams there to Mitchell, the young guy. Even if you get it to him short, he has the ability to run. Get the ball in those people's hands and have the skill to run with after they catch it. He's their talented tight end out of Chicago, number 86. Four wideouts. It's a reverse. Double reverse. Turner coming around and close to a first down. This will leave them in second and short. You don't see many reverses run from a double wing formation like that. You take a look at that. See, here the quarterback will reverse. He'll hand it off. Now the running back hands it back. Here he goes. Now Turner has it. He's the running back. It was blocked nicely on the onside over there. Good job. Good execution. Second down and short. See, that, that slows you down a little bit. Stops those linebackers. They're going to check things like that. Makes them aware that they have it. Oz to put it up. To Turner and out of bounds at the 25-yard line. So no, he, good time to throw that play out. He really wanted to go deep, but the corner backed off, backed off, and then he obviously coached if he backs off, we go for the out pattern, threw it nicely. Haas put it right where he had to put it. A 16-yard gain, and Nebraska threatening again as they move to the Georgia Tech 25-yard line. They were down 21 in the first half, remember, and they closed back to within seven. They get two quick touchdowns this time, and they'll be back by only three. So the hole not as deep as the one they faced in the first half. Duval stepping in motion. And they run the eye back, and that time we saw Leotis Flowers, the junior from Omaha, carry for the first time here this afternoon. So Flowers checks in his eye back, replacing Derek Brown, the freshman, and Battle injured on the play. He's acting like I think he has a cramp. Yeah, I think he has a cramp in that calf muscle. He's a big guy, as we've said a uh, number of times in the broadcast. Maybe the heat getting to him just a little bit down there. It's pretty tight. He made a good defensive play on that sequence against Flower. Watch here in the middle of your screen. <laughs> there he is in the middle. He is in the middle. He is the middle. He is the whole middle. Yeah, he's the, the middle, he's the right, he's the left, he's the lower end. Here he is, number 98, moving inside out on the plate. There he is, right there. Now he goes down the ground. It's starting to cramp up on him right there. Hope that's all it is. Maybe it's more serious than the cramp. You know, speaking of this bowl season, we have to say something about the performance by the Air Force Academy and the Liberty Bowl. 17-point underdog against Ohio State. They had not thrown a single touchdown pass all year. They didn't against Ohio State either. But what a great effort 
It had to be because we have seen Ohio State play such good football, including the Michigan game at the end of the season. And our troops over in the Persian Gulf able to watch that game. They had to be delighted by the effort of, of the Air Force youngsters who went in there and beat Ohio State. It has been a good bowl season for the WAC, except for Brigham Young. They were beaten pretty handily by Texas A&M, but Colorado State with a great win over, over Oregon. Air Force Academy beating Ohio State. Wyoming gave California all they wanted last night. Look at the size of him. That's why he said he's in the middle of the screen, he's in the right of the screen, he's in the left of the screen. Yeah. That cramp is starting to release. If he fills that calf muscle up with blood, he'd be empty the rest of his life. Well, a reminder that Saturday, NFL playoff doubleheader right here on ABC. Noon, we'll take you to Philadelphia, and then later, you'll go down to Miami. That will be the opener. Washington and Philadelphia. What a neighborhood war that is. They've slugged it out twice already this season. Now they come together, and then it'll be Kansas City and Miami. A lot of folks think the Chiefs are a team to really watch in the playoffs. We'll see as they travel down to South Florida to take on Miami. Noon Eastern Time, Saturday, ABC, the place to be all the way to the Super Bowl. 25th anniversary coming up in Tampa. Here now it's Hawes off a of fake for Nebraska. Looking for the quick strike. Touchdown, Nebraska. William Washington. Nebraska definitely not panicking, just being patient, moving the ball, moving off. Then they come with a big play action. This time they don't use the big 86 tight end. They go the other way. Here's Haas. He makes the fake. Now he comes out. He goes opposite direction. Has good protection. Puto is out there in front of him. He throws it back across the field. Here comes Washington to make that. That's his first reception in his career in two years at Nebraska University. And on the practice field the other day, they threw him one and he dropped it. There's a whole lot of folks in Colorado saying right now, go Cornhuskers. This one is not over, folks. It's a 10-point game, 31-21, and just a little over a quarter to go. And you get the feeling, uneasy though it might be, for Bobby Ross and Georgia Tech, that Nebraska has an explosion left before this one's over. There's Washington. Here's another angle. You'll see what this action does to the defenders. See, they start one way. Now they start the other way. They're coming out with them, running, and the receiver then coming in behind them. Coming in there behind. There he is, right in there, Washington. And as I said the other day on the practice field, he dropped it. He wears glasses. And this guy is one of the outstanding students in the country who is a member of the Distinguished Society of American High School Students coming to Nebraska. Everybody's happy. That's the first pass he's ever caught. You know, this is a sellout crowd here today. Better than 72,000 on hand. And as you look around the Citrus Bowl, you still don't see any empty seats. This has been a dandy of a fans game to watch. You know, as you look around this bowl, you know what else you see? A great place for the World League football team that's going to be here. Ah, the World League. It's, this is going to be a great city for that team. What are they called? The Thunder? The Orlando Thunder. Thunder. Remember, New York opens up with Barcelona. Barcelona will be a three-point favorite. That's the home <laughs> country advantage. <laughs> now the kick them up to Georgia Tech. And a return out to the speaking of Orlando and the sports program here. Let's go down and meet a familiar face. Let's send you back to Mark. Mark? I got a guy right here that knows something about scoring a lot of points from long range. Could have been a football player. Who knows? Dennis Scott with the Orlando Magic. Dennis, what's it like watching your former school on the verge of winning a national championship? It feels good to, to be here in Orlando to see that my fellow you know, schoolmates came here and are playing well and have a chance at a national championship. Football players and basketball players really close at your school. I think it's good. I think at Tech that we all hung together in the same class. And, and we really had a good relationship. Now they got a good chance of winning the big game. Guys, uh, Dennis Wins when said, what's it like going to a football school, not a basketball school? All right, and there's a strike to Rodriguez. Big gain on first down. Jones came out throwing. William Bell has checked back in at tailback. The key now for Georgia Tech, and Bobby Ross knows this better than anybody in the stadium, do not get conservative. You're up 10. You got a final quarter to go, but don't sit on it. Nebraska's got too much firepower. So far, he's done a great job. We'll come back into this message in a word from our ABC 
station. Channel 2's Ramblin' Rack reports with Georgia Tech and Orlando tonight after the game. Still plenty of land out there, folks. By the year 2005, they say the state of Florida will have a larger population than New York. I want to get here early to beat Let's the traffic jam. It's <laughs> what a great area this is, though. The Magic Kingdom close by. Dreams come true, and here on this playing field, it is Georgia Tech trying to make one come true, win a national championship. This is a school that became eligible for the ACC back in 1983. And they captured their first conference title with that victory over Wake Forest back in November. And things so far are certainly breaking their way. That's the team that beat Colorado, Illinois. They are being blasted by Clemson of the ACC. Miami, which has lost twice on the road at BYU and up north to that other school. <laughs> and earlier today, Michigan 35, Mississippi 3. Now on third down. Good Jones defense. did not fool Kenny Walker. Good play by Kenny Walker. I don't know if it was beer option blocking or just base blocking, but he didn't take the fake, I'll tell you that. He's right here on the right side of your screen. They're now watching work inside out. Good quickness, acceleration, and he hog ties him and throws him down. Again, if you are not with us, this is the second punter used by Georgia Tech. Garrity, this is Tony Garrity. Scott Aldridge sprained his left ankle on his first punt. He has continued to hold for Scott Sisson. And nice Garrity, punt. meanwhile, has punted beautifully for Georgia Tech. This is Bostick down at the 34-yard line. And when you come back, it'll be Nebraska's ball following that seven-yard return of a 43-yard punt. Ken Swelling, they have called him the Ronnie Lott of college football defensive secondaries. Time now for him to turn in the big play. 13-37, he was beaten on the last touchdown pass, the drop off, and it's gonna be second and long for Nebraska. Well defended by Gerald Williams. Plus, as you said earlier in the game, Brent, he planted his back foot to try to drive forward and lost traction right there in a big divot like I had a nine iron in my hand, slipped right, you know, went right out from underneath him. You'll see it's going to be a screen pass. He drops it off there. The heat's coming after him right there. Good rush on him. Second down and 14. Swilling so far has not been credited with any tackles. Hard to believe in this game. His team is ahead by 10. Only a tie for Nebraska. Good defense though on the inside with no place to go. Jay Martin was one of the defenders in for the Ramblin' Wreck. Good time to, desert, to decide by George Leary, the defensive coordinator, to put pressure on him. Take a look at it now. He's going to roll out, make a play-action fake inside there, and here it is. Too much pressure. Simmons, 99, inside, defender outside. Martin, number 80. In fact, Martin's dad was Billy Martin, who played five years in the NFL. Third down and 19. They press the wide receivers with the corners. Penalty marker is down. Throws complete to Soto, far short of the first down. But the penalty flag was thrown. Probably holding. Play on the tackle with the penalty flag on the field. Yeah, holding. I think they'll refuse the penalty and have him punt. And they got up to the 28-yard line with the pass. And that's what they're going to do. Yeah. He grabbed him by the, with a the right hand inside the jersey. Number 73, Steve Engstrom. Georgia Tech is going to get the ball back now with a 10-point lead in 12 minutes on the clock. I, mean, I, I agree with what you said earlier, though. Don't just think you can hang on to it by going three downs and out or run, 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 run. Stick with what's been real good for him. Mix those passes in there. And it, if they drop him back, he's always dangerous on the scramble. They'll set a return here. Yes. Well, it looks like here they've got the 10-man rush. Gets it off. 
McGill hits at the 35. He gets back away from it. It's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. So when you come back, 11.46 to go. Unbeaten Georgia Tech, 31. Nebraska, 21. Sixty miles from here, the Kennedy Space Center. That's the vehicle assembly the building that you're looking at there. And here we are in Central Florida, Orlando, the Citrus Bowl, with Georgia Tech attempting to win a national championship. The only unbeaten team leading Nebraska by 10. 11.46 to go. First and 10 now for the Ramblin' Wreck. And this will leave them with second and long as Bell simply slipped a little bit, making that cut into the line. Bobby Ross coaching with a heavy heart here. As soon as this game is over, he'll return immediately to the bedside of his mother, who's been critically ill. He'll join the rest of his family. He's done a, just a spectacular job, and I kind of believe that he's the leading candidate for the NCAA Coach of the Year coming up here at the convention. Sean Jones has been his ringleader on the field, the sophomore from Thomasville, Georgia. He has done it all here today. Rolling out, buying time, throwing long to Lester. He's got it. If that pass had been just a little shorter, Lester would have gone the distance. But as it was, it was 39 yards, and they're rambling again. Again, that's bootleg action, meaning the running back's going full flow. One way, quarterback coming out the other way. See, that is what that does to a defender out there playing one on one for a minute. It attracts him looking back inside, and a receiver many times can slip up inside, and that's exactly what he did on Bruce Pickens, number 38. Jones now 15 of 21 for 260 yards in the game. This is Bell, and Kroll brings him down from behind. But this will put them in second and relatively short. Bell, number 36, in all the games we've done this year, we go in to do a broadcast, and we hear a lot about the running backs. We've actually heard less about this guy, but I think I've been more impressed with his performance on the tapes that we've seen and in the game today. He's a quality football player. And back next year. Back sophomore He's only a sophomore. Four times 100-yard games in his career already. Anthony Rice goes over to the left side of the formation. And they bring motion in behind Jones. And here he comes again. Inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. The key to plays like that when you toss the ball is you get penetration upfield. The fullback gets the kickout block. Stephen Scott, number 40. You'll see him appear. Penetration up there. Now watch Scott. Kick him out. And he goes up inside that running line. Receivers downfield doing a good job of blocking. Moving the chains. The Nebraska defense in need of a big play. Need a turnover down here. First and goal. The toss down of Bell behind the right side. Into the end zone. toss play but this time run toward a tight end a tight end to block the linebacker to prevent penetration they're going to toss it to him man in motion you see the defender chasing him he tosses it back but he doesn't take much time now he comes right up inside those gaps kick out up inside they will not be denied the lead had been cut to 10 they go 63 yards in five plays they lead it 38 to 21. Now Tom Osborne in Nebraska looking at a mountain again. Down by 17. 9.43 to go. And looking for a big play on this kickoff team. It has been the number one return team this year. They weren't going to use Tyrone Hughes, number 33, on the kickoff return because of the slight shoulder separation, but 
He's back there now, and he averaged 29-1. This is Brown from the four. Right side. And a good return out to the 34-yard line. Now with nine minutes and 30 seconds, you can't fool around with too many running plays. You're out of there 17 points. Pause this half. Perfect passing. Six of six for 45 yards and a touchdown. He replaced Mike Grant as the Nebraska quarterback. Mickey Joseph injured and unable to play, and then he was one of the four players suspended earlier in the week for this game. So originally he was going to be on the sideline in a jersey, but instead he is watching from the stand. Four players broke some team rules earlier in the week and Tom Osborne set them down first and ten Osborne throw it again wants Mitchell down the middle and Mitchell goes up and makes a fabulous catch in traffic there's the young man out of Chicago he is something we've been talking about him we've watched him in practice we've watched him on other game tapes he is a big man he's a fast man four or five and a forty You'll see him coming off the tight end position right here, and he'll work down and get in between these two safeties right in here. Then he'll actually sort of fade to the right with the throw. Here he comes. He's working down. See the safety swelling number one started working up. Now he's out working to the left-hand side of your screen. First and ten for Nebraska. The ball at the 35, and Haas hits Brown underneath. And he has a seven-yard gain on that play. Tom Haas is growing and growing and growing by each play, gaining confidence. You know, he hasn't played any football. He's enjoying this. Mitchell has caught three passes for 94 yards and one touchdown. This will be down and three for the Huskers. Soto, the fullback, has gone all the way. He is set in front of Brown. Turner coming in motion. Brown. He went 50 for a touchdown in the first half. Here he is getting a first down at the Tech 15-yard line. And still a solid nine minutes on the clock. And here come the Cornhuskers again. He finds those cutbacks. He really finds those cutbacks. If we take a look at this from the end zone, you'll note that he starts to the left, has vision to cut back to the right. Good job of blocking on the right side. See, he sees that hole. Defender on the right side coming up field way too far. Linebacker pursuing out of there too quick. Giving him the cutback. And carries 94 yards. Now on first and 10. Oz dropping back. Has time to throw over the middle. Incomplete. And he wanted Turner near the goal line. And Swilling coming up with perhaps his best defensive play of the game. He was there. Look how big he is for a safety. Here's Swilling pedaling out. He's settling, settling, watching what's happening. Now he's reacting, moving buck inside there. When you run into him as a safety, you think, my gosh, who is that? It's got to be a linebacker. You wouldn't think you'd know. After he yeah, hit after he hits you. Second down and 10 yards. That's the first incompletion this half by off. He completed eight in a row before that one. Now it's second down and 10. Paws off a of fake. Now pitching out of bounds. Sort of botching up the option. He wanted to throw the ball. He wanted to come down on the option pass. It wasn't there. He continued on down, turned it into an option run. Nebraska is one of the few teams that can really do that well. That's hard to do. You're coming down the line, fake the run, think pass, so start to throw the pass, the defense will take it away, you turn it back into a run. Tough to do. If they fail on this third down, the Nebraska coaching staff has a decision to make. They are down by 17, and Tom Osborne will have to consider going for the touchdown or settling for the field goal. And Nebraska is 0 of 9 on third down. Standing up, throws to the sideline, out of bounds. It is fourth and long. A field goal, if successful, would leave Nebraska within 14. I think they go ahead and kick the field goal. They're not that great of, you know, a throwing team right anyway. That's not their personality. Go ahead and kick the field goal. Eight then you're minutes. only two plays out of the ball game. They're going to go. 
They've gone 25 times on fourth down this year, and they've been successful only 11. Well, that's, that's not too bad. <laughs> Here they come. And Oz will use a timeout. Doesn't like what he was looking at over there on the defensive side of the ball. So we'll take a break. And we'll be right back with Nebraska's fourth down here in the fourth quarter. Fourth down and 13. 8.44 to go, trailing by 17. The resident genius sitting up here thinks they ought to go for the field goal because they do have, then there are only two big plays out of it. The percentage chances of getting this uh, six-point play aren't real good. Though they can make a first down. They have to get inside the five to do that. Hawes is straight back under pressure and sacked at the 29-yard line. Thomas Balkum with a safety blitz brings him down. Pressure, pressure, pressure. They're coming, both outside backers coming. Here comes the safety, strong safety coming from the field. He didn't see him. There he is. Normally, in a sophisticated passing attack, you have keys that tell you to dump the ball off when you see the safety blitz. Several times today, they have brought the safety on a delayed blitz from the outside. Never picked up. That's tough to pick it up. What you normally do is dump it off. Carl Lawson and Jeff Wright are in as running backs. And Georgia Tech now will see what they can do to the clock. 8.30 to go. 38 to 21, the Rambler wreck with the lead. The best they can do, the best thing they can do with the clock is do what they've been doing. <laughs> Just move the ball and score. That's their offense. That's what makes it good. And injured yellow jacket down on the field. You know, while we've got an opportunity to talk about Georgia Tech, I'm sure that a lot of youngsters watching this team think that it was a basketball power and it's never been a football power but under the legendary late Bobby Dodd they were one of the best football schools in the southeast for years a very tough academic school and now Bobby Ross and his assistants have done a fabulous job of recruiting some youngsters who can make it academically then, yeah. along with athletically. Yeah, you know, and as good as this offense has been this year, 4,334 yards, the record is 4,557 yards from 1984. This is Daryl Jenkins coming off the field. He's the guy that's been battling all day long with Kenny Walker, and he had to play well for them to win the football game. Offensive line coach Pat Watson's got to be very proud of him. Second down and 12. Jones throws a strike for a first down. Just what you said, it went to Emmett Merchant. Do what you do best. They have a very good offense. They do a lot of things with it. All the receivers catch the ball. All the running backs run it. They have many different formations. Just stick with that. Another 16-yard gain. By the quarters, and the game went this way as Georgia Tech rambled out to a 21-0 lead before Nebraska struck for a couple of scores, then a field goal in the second half. It's been a 14-7 advantage, Georgia Tech. Tied once this year, that by North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Running and working on the clock. Bell swinging free, he's open, he'll go! Give me all 22 of that if you can. the linebacker comes in and smacks him right there he takes him on boom he gets in he gets a pat on him there and watch it safety hits him right there he just keeps going no one else wraps her arms around him he just keeps running he didn't hear a whistle he just keeps on going excellent excellent effort 
extra point is added by Sisson after the 57 yard touchdown by William Bell. Button could not bring him down and he spins free. Watch this. We have to look at that again. That was so good. What that is, you know, something you don't coach that. That young man is born with that desire to excel. What a great effort. One of the best efforts I've seen in the last few years of doing college football. What a heart. Well, you can vote against them as number one if you want, but I wouldn't pass through Atlanta in the nearby future if you do. 45 to 21. Bell explodes for better than 120 yards. That's against the defense that had only given up 132 against the runner. Right? Twenty-three thousand five hundred tickets for this game were purchased by Georgia Tech fans. Many of them up in the Atlanta area. They have driven the seven hours for this game, and now they can feel it, that their Yellow Jackets are ever so close to winding up number one. Beyond anybody's expectations here this afternoon, they have exploded for 45 points in the face of Nebraska. It is 45-21, and you can count two and perhaps three first-round draft choices on that Nebraska defense. Walker, he could wind up in the first round. Kroll figures to go in the first round. Tyrants is a first rounder. And Georgia Tech has done it all here today. Seven and a half to go. Now Hodge will see if he can rally the Cornhuskers and come up with another big play. Line side pressure gets this one off. Out of bounds. Bostic was working that far side. You know, no offense is really designed perfectly for major comebacks, but this style of offense, it's a lot tougher to come back when you're in a lot of tight formations, three backs in the backfield, two tight ends, one receiver. And, and Tom Osborne has coached different styles of offenses over the years, dependent upon his quarterback. I mean, Ferragamo, you know, good pro offense, pro quarterback. So he goes and does what his athletes do best. Second down and 10. This is Brown. It's about six yards. He'll leave them at about 34 or five yards to go. Score from the Cotton Bowl in the fourth quarter. Miami 39, Texas 3. The score from the Cotton Bowl was just announced by the PA announcer here in Orlando with Miami running it up on Texas, but remember the Hurricanes have lost twice this year. It won't be enough points to uh, get him past this kind of points. He eludes Balkum this time, throws to Mitchell, who steps free, and Mitchell brings it across. He's a tight end! He's <laughs> to the 27-yard line, down in a heap, and saying, ah, oh, shucks. And he has the kind of speed he can keep on going. I noticed on the practice field, he's the kind of player that he's a young one, you know, a, a true freshman, and the, and the veterans tease him a lot. The other day, he made enough mistakes on the practice field that the coaches had him running laps after practice, and they'd worked for two and a half hours. Here he is. Now, you can see the mobility and agility of this big guy. If I'm a safety at Iowa State or Kansas State, I might think about transferring. <laughs> he's a freshman. <laughs> he's going to be great. I already is. He's the terrific player. First and ten. He's got four passes for 125 yards and one touchdown. Hawes now pulling straight back. He has Mitchell down the right side of the end zone. Goes for him incomplete. He will cover that time by Curly Day. Flag on the field. Holding a signal against Nebraska. Well, this is a Nebraska team which has experienced bowl difficulty over the last few years. They're going to lose here today in the Citrus Bowl to Georgia Tech. They have lost their last three bowl games. 
they thought it was going to be easier escaping the state of Florida. Neither the Seminoles nor Miami was here in Orlando for this Citrus Bowl. The Tom Osborne and his staff ran into a buzzsaw here this afternoon, and it has been a very unhappy ending for a team that had visions of number one itself. As you look at those bowl game opponents, so you recognize they are playing one, two, or three best team in the country within those bowl games. Boy, anybody that can do what he has done for 18 years, average nine wins, never win, never win less than nine, and ten times win ten or more. And I just, I mean, I, it almost doesn't seem possible. Here's Mitchell again. Brought down at the 30 by Clay. So this will leave Nebraska with a third and 11 and 614. Most points scored versus Nebraska in bowl game, 40. Bobby Ross was the architect. He's a man who is a very hands-on head coach. He pours over film himself. He is intimately involved in the game plans of the offense, defense, and the kicking team. And the reason why Marv Levy wanted to come back into the NFL. This is a man who understands very much the art of football, and he has proved it here again this afternoon as he did against Virginia. Let's go to Mark Jones. Mark? Well, guys, the mood behind the Georgia Tech bench, very upbeat right now. They are going for the juggler. Sean Jones, quarterback for the Tech team, coming over to his offensive lineman and saying, guys, let's hang a half dollar on these guys. They want more than 50. It's going to look impressive in the polls. <laughs> a half dollar. Well, maybe someday they'll have a tournament, and we won't have to worry about it. You know, that. as we move around through this year, you run into coaches say, no, they're not interested. Toward the end of the year, you find more and more coaches saying, well, maybe we ought to work something out and have a playoff. Tom Osborne among them. He's Tom starting to them. change his tune. Incomplete. One Brown. Brown wins the ring. Now they go on this fourth down. Mitchell checks back into the Nebraska lineup. He and Turner. Bostick will be the receivers. They need to get to the 19-yard line for a first down. 5.41 to go. Straight back. With his receivers covered, has to take off, and he's going to be far short of that first down. Georgia Tech takes over. Drop by Tiggle. Alvin Tiggle making the hit. And coming your way next, it'll be the Rose Bowl from Pasadena. Washington, the Pac-10 champion against Iowa of the Big Ten. Return trip to Atlanta for those young men. Oh, okay. and for them, tough, tough trip back to Lincoln. They really didn't recover, did they, from that fourth quarter against Colorado? They lost a little something, and they haven't been able to regain it back. Coaches felt they got some of it back in preparation. We thought the defense was ready here. But they have given up 45 points to Georgia Tech. And Edwards checks in with his first carry, number 39. You know, he was the starting running back. William Bell did not start the season as the first ring running back. T.J. Edwards did. He got banged up. Bell took over. I would think that next year when they start talking about Heisman Trophy candidates, that quarterback Sean Jones of Georgia Tech will get more than a mention. There's more than one Sean at quarterback of the ACC. And that, a Georgia Tech record, 459 yards. Off the fake, here comes Jones again, incomplete. He threw behind Rice. Nebraska has not given up that many yards yet this year. Well, actually, Nebraska has gone beyond their average for the season. You know, they, this average for the season, 394, and here they are setting the record in a bowl game. This is a young man who injured his elbow earlier this week, too, we should point out. He was stiff a couple days ago, but then in the last two practices prior to the Citrus Bowl, he was in excellent shape. You get a whole lot of folks that agree with that right now. 
a dangerous Good play <laughs> down here. And this situation. They're feeling they're very comfortable right now. They're going to go into the rest of the bag of tricks. I guess that Good was in defense. the game plan, so they figured yeah. they had to use they it. They might as right? well use it. It's something we haven't called. They said Bobby doesn't call the stuff himself, for example, like the defense. And the defensive coach was telling me, George O'Leary is saying one day, he'll walk over to you, get get him stopped, get him stopped. He said, I'm doing everything I can, coach. <laughs> Wonder if they'll take a long safety in this situation. 45-21 here with four minutes to go. Probably no, not. Nebraska so, will come back after him. They might take a penalty here and eat up some time, but uh, they'll go ahead. Ooh, they got hit. They did. They drew the roughing. Mostek dropped down. He fumbled. And it was whistled down. That was Daryl Swilling, I think, number 51. Another Swilling. Daryl Swilling. Here's the penalty. You cannot run into the kicker. He strung out there. <laughs> they, 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 they bumped him. He's, that's a penalty. Nate Turner bumping him. They'll just punt it again because that's just five yards. They didn't call roughing. That's just running into. What do we got here? Was it a turnover or was it not? I think they whistled the ball down. All, they're marking it up there where, where the return was. Bostic returned the ball to the 33. We have a five yards running into. They may let them have By it the back receiver. there. Yeah. It's C five. Yes, yeah. That's exactly what they're going to do. Yeah. And let Nebraska put it in play with 3.52 to go. <laughs> a whole lot of folks can be proud of this Georgia Tech team this year. What a great year for Atlanta. How they wind up being named the future host of the Olympics. Basketball team gets into the final four from Georgia Tech. Somebody's got to get some pictures for the Braves. <laughs> First and ten. Complete to Brown. I'm really impressed with that young man. He has a great future. And we should report that Kevin Battle is back in the middle of that defensive line. So that injury that he sustained, not serious, and he has returned to play. He had, he had that big muscle cramp, I'm sure that there was. You know, uh, you notice so nobody packed him off the field. They let him walk off. At 300 pounds, I guess they didn't want that challenge. Second down now for Hawes. to Brown, Ooh. sprinting out, being pursued. He will not get it off. Another sack as Calvin Tegel gets that one, and it is the fourth time that they have sacked the Nebraska quarterback today. Calvin Tegel came into the game with three sacks. They're not a team that commits the linebackers an awful lot. They use their outside people and Marco Coleman and, and Marlon Williams to do that, but that time they sent those guys. Message is delivered by the Yellow Jackets here in Orlando. Hard back. Stepping away from the pressure and across the line, and he'll go down at the 28-yard line. You know, Bobby Bowden was happy that Florida State would enter the ACC and not the Southeastern Conference. Bobby didn't want to have one of those neighborhood wars every week, but I'm not so sure if he's getting into it. <laughs> Getting into an easy football yeah. conference the way no. things are going up in ACC land. They're doing a good job. You know, and it's amazing when things are going well, you put in your back uh, linebacker, 57, Eric Fry, he goes in, he's just played a little bit, he goes in, boom, he makes the big play. Everybody's playing well. On fourth down, they pull everybody up. 11 men were defending in case they face and let them hunt it out of bounds. Stop the clock at a minute and a half. Well, Georgia Tech has done all they could do, and now they've left it up to the voters. And right now, let's check in with Keith Jackson at the Rose Bowl. Keith? 
Well, you couldn't have a better day for a football game in Southern California. The Rose Bowl is going to be stuffed to the gills, Bob Greasy. And I think we're going to have ourselves a good ball game because these are two coaches that know how to handle people. Well, they, they both want to be the underdog, and only one of them is. Hayden Fry is the underdog. He has lost the last two times he's played in the uh, Rose Bowl as a favorite. He loves the, the uh, spot of being the underdog. Don James, on the other hand, the Washington head man would love to be in that position because he freely says that uh, you've got more to work with when you are the underdog, but today he is not. The Iowa Hawkeyes and the Washington Huskies in the 77th Rose Bowl. Coming up next. And meanwhile, back here in Orlando, we have a minute 20 to go. Backup quarterback Jeff Howard has replaced Jones at the helm of the unbeaten rambling wreck of Georgia Tech. You know, it was Clemson, the last ACC team, which won the national championship, and they did it by beating Nebraska in the Orange Bowl. And his right carrying the ball. The final seconds tick away here in Orlando. Brent, there, there is absolutely no way that the voters can vote regardless of what happens. You know, there's just no way. To be fair and just and do it as the system has dictated in years past, they've got to vote these kids. You know, I, I didn't come into this ball game prepared to say that, really. Because I, I felt coming into this ball game, the best football team I saw all year was the University of Washington. And they still might be. And they might prove that today. Hayden Fry and those guys will do a good job, though. You know that. But th this is a quality football team, and, and going by how they have done it in the past, I don't think they have a choice, and it's a good choice. Bobby, Georgia Tech coaching staff, we salute you. Look at Jenkins. <laughs> Number 66. So much agony for Tom Osborne, who has never won a national championship. He came so close in the Orange Bowl that night in that great game against Miami, going for the two at the end of the game, unable to get in. Howard Schnellenberger coming away with the title. And now Tom's defense giving up 45 points here today. Georgia Tech and Orlando, they have lost three of their last four games now to close out this bitterly disappointing season for the Cornhuskers. Here's the toss to right, and the final seconds count down. You know, I think Nebraska has the problem. They have such credibility in their football program that everybody that plays them plays them a little better than they play anybody else at any other time. These moments come once a lifetime. Enjoy them. Boy, I'll tell you. Dick Vermeil, I'm Brent Musburger. So long for Orlando, the Rose Bowl is coming up next.